No, I was watching your special, bro, and you're, and you're like, you started talking about your dad, and I'm, I'm watching it going, uh, I can't get sad, man. The fucker had a dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabes que, let's do the show, porque está calado, y tú tengas algo, algo, that dry cleaner ahí, by Kim Phelps, se pegó la cabeza, y algo, get some new sport, sport and fall. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Bye. Oh, my God. Hi. Hey, everybody, this is producer Grant here. Just a reminder, if you like the show, if you're enjoying the show, please like, comment, subscribe on any platform you're checking it out on, whether that's on YouTube, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anything. Any engagement that we have really, really helps. We all serve the almighty algorithm these days, and any amount that you sort of interact with the show in any way just really helps us out, helps us get cooler guests for the show, helps raise the profile for the show, helps give us more content for you guys to enjoy. So thanks again for checking it out, and please enjoy the episode. Uh, you know, you know, in this business, man, you can know somebody like over 30 years and never really have sat down to talk to him because, you know, you're always in different places. So you want to introduce our guest? Comedian Willie Barcena in the house. Uh, 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 we, you know, we've never sat down before and had a conversation. We actually did, bro. We actually did many times. I remember you and I sitting down in um, San Antonio. Well, then how come I don't fucking remember? No, no, no listen, I remember, I remember this. We sat down and we talked. And matter of fact, matter of fact, bro. After that, you and I walked back to our hotel, was uh, which it was connected to the to the mall. And I remember right. you, bro. We passed some suits, and you looked at me and you go, Willie, man, you you know what I want in life, man? I want to be able to walk into a store like that and buy two suits, man, and not even worry about it. I remember that's how long ago this was, brother. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah, no, we talked. We talked a few times, man. Now he owns a suit company. Yeah, and I was exactly. <laughs> but this is back. Hey, did I we mean, ask you to fucking tra- <laughs> chat them <laughs> so, no, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I remember another time, you and this is back, back before all the pedals started with Carlos and all that stuff, bro. Santana. This, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you and I were at a, at a party for uh, it was it was uh. Uh, Ch- Ch- uh, Cheech's Cheech and birthday. Chong. Cheech's birthday in San Antonio. That's right. And then you. Did we t- go to his room and smoke weed? He made that made of the the bong out of the apple. Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> but, but it was you and you and Carlos were trying to tell me to. It was before MySpace, before MySpace, and you guys were telling me, "Hey, Willie, you, you got you gotta um get people's emails or people's addresses and postcards, and you gotta you gotta <laughs> build a network." <laughs> and I was like, "Man, fuck you guys, man." You know, I said, I told you guys. Uh, you know, people are gonna find me, and it's funny. <laughs> me. And years yeah. later, you know, years later, like through you know through all our careers and everything, I was like, man, I should listen to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, but before uh, MySpace, before MySpace, bro, you 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 Carlos and another cat, you guys used, would put cards on tables, and people would give you their their address. Oh yeah, that's right. And you guys would collect their ad and send them. You guys, right. are, this, this is way back in the day, bro. Anyways, man. Um, Oh, it's Paul. Paul was another one. I know, and I know the whole uh, pedal shit that you guys. You guys we, we, he and I have pedal. No, I, I don't know. You guys remind I, me of that. I don't no, know you guys. You guys. I mean, I've never seen you guys on a show together. You know. You know. No. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> um, you know, Paul Rodriguez. Uh, I met Paul Rodriguez in 1979. He had just started. Shit, I was in ninth grade. Bro. He was, you know. <laughs> I, I wish I was in ninth grade. The, but but uh, Paul got hot fast uh, in the yeah, early '80s. Yeah, yeah, with that sitcom. He that, got. He did the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Did great. Did you ever see him on the uh, Tonight Show? Yes. Paul Rodriguez. Yes. He had the Mexican Express card. Mexican Express card. Pulled like out a knife. Pulled out a knife. And then he had a great joke where he was in the elevator, and uh, were there people talking? What was a joke? He said they were in there, and he says to the people, you weren't in there. And I said, hey, this is America. Speak Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> and then he had the, yeah, and he also had the uh, the flying saucers. Yeah. Remember the, that? He would throw, throw the, tortillas. <laughs> that was the back of, it was like. The reason yeah, regular like fucking stage? Chicano Gallagher, huh? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, but uh, um, I'll tell you this. I've, I've hardly ever said this publicly. But me and my friend Ernie. 
God rest his soul. Uh, we're at the Comedy Store one Monday night and uh, in the early 80s. And they said, um, and we're going to bring this guy up, you know, special guest, Paul Rodriguez. He goes up there. And people, I think they know him, DC Cab, or he had a AK Pop, but whatever. He, he, Paul was like on the up. And he goes up there and fucking kills him, man, in, that, yeah. in the side room, the original room, where we went to the original room. And he yeah. fucking just kills him, man. He's yeah. killing everybody. And uh, when we were leaving, me and Ernie were, were looking at each other and we we're like, man, this fucking guy is good, man. It's like, imagine by the time I get that good, that dude's going to probably be that much better. Right. But he never got. Never got that much better because I don't think he really worked. He kind of, he kind of, Paul would say he would wing it. He'd walk out there and just how he was feeling, he would just kind of wing it. And that's, you know, kind of hit and miss, you know. So I think, you know, in, the, in no, this preparation, man, in this business, <laughs> you need to be more hits than miss. So I, I just think he, he ran into a little thing where he was trying to get by on like attitude, but you really need to be better prepared for, yeah, for yeah, anything. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I, so I did a show with him about, I don't know two years ago I did it. We did a theater, and this whole thing came up about the Latinos, you know, because back then, man, it was it was Paul was working, and you were the only headliner, bro. And because Carlos, me and Car I don't know if you know this, me, Carlos, and two other young comedians went to go see him when when he when you did our senior hall, man. Ah, we were there. I don't know. I don't even I, if you even fucking know. No, that, I didn't bro. know that. But we were like we were like little baby comics, you know, <laughs> and like we're looking at someone who like. It's one of us, you know, one of our guys is, is, is in, you know, it's like, like a mob thing, you know, hey, that's one of our guys, he's in. Yeah. And we're all up there, man. And uh, and then we all went to go to a diner after, it was me, Carlos, and, and, and uh, I think Jeff Garcia was with us. Mm -hmm. Jeff Garcia was like 17, 18. But then, and anyways, I, I brought this up to, to Paul when, 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 and, uh, two years ago, and I said, yeah, man, it was you, and it was George. I go, and I felt that, for me, we could have been more of a, a of a group like like the Negros do, bro. Yep. The black dudes. I came up in South Central at the Comedy Club, and I used you to did. see the way they came. Phase on Love, D.L. Hughley, all these guys. They were all young comics, man. A uh, 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 Pierre, um, man, and a uh, Chris Tucker, mm -hmm. who back in the day I used to give him a ride. All right. So tell tell everybody where that club was, because because on Crenshaw on Forty Third. So back then, there was a few clubs in in. Uh, in uh, uh, in that area, Marla's Memory Lane. There was a couple other ones. Uh, what was that? Wh which one was that? Where you guys went to? Do you remember? The, uh, there was this oh, man, this guy named Brown, something Brown, and, uh, and he wrote for uh, for Arsenio. Jeff Brown. No, 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 Brown. no, 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 no. Oh, J. Anthony Brown. J. Anthony Brown. He had he had a club. It, yeah. And his was on Crenshaw. The one that I'm talking about was on Crenshaw on 43rd, bro. Yeah. But anyways, I see the black guys out. They would pull for each other. They, they would be in the green room uh, upstairs at the yeah. comedy. And I wanted to create that back then, you know. I want I wanted to get us like that, but man, we just we just won't, you know. And and I, I brought that up with uh, with with Paul, and you know Paul's emotional, bro. I don't know if you know that about him. Mm, I didn't know Super that. emotional dude, yeah. man. Super like people that hang hang out with him a little, you know. They, he'll he started tearing up, man, and he's like, man, Willie, me. He goes, me and George, we should have. Help the young cats more. We 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 should have. Anyways, man, there's him. You know, obviously, man, we, you know, drinking a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, did, do you, did you find that amongst detectives? Where like were detectives territorial? Where Chicano detectives hung out, or white detectives hung out with each other? African American uh, uh, detectives. Those that liked Mexicans didn't matter. You know, there was no the the Mexican didn't give a shit who they hung out with. There were some guys that just didn't like Mexicans, didn't hang out with them, but they all helped each other out. It wasn't us against There was them. no racism within no. the police department? No, no. We, there Come was on, no, Gil. There, there, there was the, no, the there, 70s and 60s? There was no, no time where there was ever a conflict. Now, when you look back at things and when you realize that uh, they just celebrated their 100th anniversary in Homicide Bureau. All right. And I went to Homicide Bureau in 1981, and then I went back as a lieutenant in uh, 2004. When I went back, I was the first Latino above the rank of sergeant to ever work homicide bureau at that time. You know, it had just never been done. So why is somebody going to try and convince me that there was never another Latino worthy of being a lieutenant <laughs> right, up there in yeah, homicide okay. bureau? So I had all this thing. So 
there are a few things like that, but and at that time, if you looked at the department, most of the executives were all white Anglo-Saxon. Right. You know, they were all there. So was there in, in somebody's mind, but in the in the working swine at our level, yeah. I didn't see it. You know, I you didn't, didn't see anybody having <laughs> having an issue with having a a, a, a partner of color. No, that they wouldn't per, they wouldn't perceive that that maybe that guy was not of the same caliber because he might have been uh, a white uh, sheriff and he wants to, wants to buddy up or partner with another white sheriff? I never saw it, maybe just because I was confident in, in what I was. You believe in what yeah, I was saying one guy out of, I mean, I'm glad yeah. that it was you, you know, it's yeah. better than nothing. It's like, look, I'll give you an example. There's bro. a Chicago cop. There's, there's a cop number right there. Hey, better than nothing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. Right, you look, they didn't believe me in the Night Stalker case. Yeah. Did they you know didn't. that? Yeah, I, I, yeah, bro. I found so out they, about him through this so whole they thing. Yeah, they didn't believe me then, and it was okay. Let's say, let's say let's say what it is. So, serial killer on the loose back then. In 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 your investigations, you started to say this has to be the same person. I There's was no way guy. that this is two or three guys or or two guys doing I it. Other was one. You man. said. This one person, one guy, and and they didn't believe you. They didn't. They didn't believe you. They they, they made fun of you and they bad mouthed you. Having the uh, amount of understanding I did, it was easy not to believe me though, because nobody in criminal history had ever done what this guy was doing. This is the first time in criminal history, so it was easy not to believe me. I, I don't fault the guys for not believing me. I pissed off at the guys that made fun of me and called right. me names, said I was a young punk. What kind of names did they call you, bro? Oh, Come they on. call me a motherfucker. I'm just a young <laughs> punk trying to make a name for Look myself. <laughs> you know? No, they didn't call <laughs> me Mocoso. They couldn't say Mocoso. <laughs> but, <laughs> fucking incestual. Uh, so I, I, I walk out of Monterey Park Police when I had a friend over there. He says, every time you walk out, they motherfuck you to death because yeah. they think you're full of shit and a young punk and this. Uh, so... It it didn't matter. I had to, you know, I had to move forward. I had a job. Yeah, but I, what I was getting at was the, that we weren't doing what the blacks were doing back then, and no. which was working together, you know. And I don't know. If mm -hmm. you, see, it's something you'll never know, bro. Uh, is that I did the Tonight Show, uh, and I and your show hadn't been out yet on ABC. It hadn't come out yet. And this is how this is how I was, man. I told I, I told Jay Jay, man, there's a lot of Latinos out there that should be on your show. Obviously, I mentioned you, man. Mm -hmm. But I was still trying to pull people in. What mm -hmm. I barely got my toes in. Right. Do you know what I mean? And I and I and and I think I told you. I think me and you spoke about this. Do you remember? You remember or not, bro? Me I know he wasn't you. a fan of mine, but no. But do you remember me telling you? No. Yeah, I I I I had told you, bro. Like, hey, man, I I. I uh, I, I put your name out there, man, and I, I don't know. And I, and I said I don't know what it is. I don't know if you guys don't get along or what. But I put your name out there to be on the show. Okay. Did you ever call him? I remember that. Did you Did you ever call him? Did I ever call Jay Leno? Yeah. About what? About the Tonight Show. Did you ever be? Did you? No. No. Okay. All right, bro. Why did he say I called him? No, I don't know. I, I, I you know, how uh, cheese must fly. So I thought, did he? I don't know. I'll no, no, I never. So no. this is okay. I never called him. All right, all right. Um, you did the Tonight Show ten times. Yeah, which is pretty amazing. Oh wow, I mean, yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's great. But and, and all with Jay Leno. All with Jay. Actually, I'll, they offer. I got offered to do Letterman, but you know, Letterman and and Leno had this thing. Yeah. And I, I I knew about it. It was it was even before the movie came out that there was oh, that, that movie about their right their competition. Mm -hmm. But I just felt loyalty to to Jay. You know I'm, a, I'm a, you know I'm just a loyal dude, bro. And I I had said I passed on it. And I and I told Jay, hey man, I got offered. I just want to let you know, man, that I got offered a, a Letterman, but I'm passing it up because I, I want to do your show. And right. then he was a, you know he was appreciative. He was he was always a good dude to, uh, uh, to me, bro. You know me actually. Me and you, bro, we have some some like stories that parallel that you don't even know about, bro. Like you had a, when you when you got your sitcom with ABC. Yeah, I had a deal with them at the same time for my sitcom at ABC. At ABC, and when you got picked up, I got dropped. You know, I mean, I which, didn't is, know that. which is which is hot. I know well, how far I, did you get in? I, I, did I, you I, did you shoot the pilot? No, 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 no. We 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 got a, a writer. We wrote the script, and then we're going to the next level. And then I read, remember back then, they, they would have, the, the magazine Variety, mm -hmm. we had 7-Eleven, you could see like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember, I remember reading it where, oh, George Lopez gets picked up. And, and then, uh, but the day before, they had dropped me. 
my agent had called me and said, "Hey, yeah, we, but that's not, not. I mean, you know, if you're talking about like helping other people, they didn't. They, you know, they should. No, no. This is yeah. my point, bro. This is my point. And, and when when I was talking to Paul about like how we are with each other, yeah, I said, bro, this is what Hollywood does to Latinos. And I try to explain it to Paul. And I'm I'm tell you, tell me, I want to get your take on it. All right. And it and I and I believe that in Hollywood, man, we're not we're not bad guys, man. People aren't trying to uh, 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 purposely screw each other you know fuck each other's career what it is is hollywood gives you gives the latinos a sliver of the steak a sliver all right and they throw it in there and they get all these lions all right motherfuckers eat so that's everybody yeah. we're fucking chomping on each other trying to get that sliver man you know mm -hmm. so i think that's to me that's one of the reasons when i was telling paul i, I said hey bro i think this is it's, it's not intentional it's it's you you it's it's almost like uh, a lot of Latinos were put in that position where, right. where you're gonna fucking fight to get that a bite, a taste, and then you know the guys in back. <laughs> Look at this body. I yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. I got the bite. But but but, uh, but so what do you, it, what's your what's your view on that, man? Uh, um, yeah, I mean it's true. I think it's it's hard for everybody, but I think it's harder for Latinos. Like, um, you had you had a. Uh, but you you had a deal there, right? Yeah. Did Jay Leno have a? Did you and Jay Leno I, I, have a deal? I, I had a deal with Leno, man, and we we uh, we got this writer, and uh, a top notch writer, bro. I'm not gonna mention his name. No need to, you know, drag his name in the mud. But but um, did he did he write other shows? Was a showrunner yeah. or a writer? No, 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 no. He he wrote for a pretty pretty big show at the time. Yeah. And he got a lot of money. I, I know I know what mm -hmm. you know. Jay told me, man. You know yeah. what what, the, what they paid this cat, and. I was supposed, you know, I'm, your writers, I'm, I'm sure when you did your show, you and your writers would go and eat and hang out, maybe drink beer. Am I right or wrong? Or no? No, that's no? Really wrong. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, not wrong, but we didn't do that. You guys didn't hang out? No. No, because usually that's what happens. With right. the, a writer will hang out with the talent to get to know their soul a little bit. So anyways, this this uh, Jay tried to manifest that. He goes, hey, man, go out with the writer. He set up a lunch. We, we had lunch, uh, and all I all I knew was about him. Like about you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, all I knew was like what he did, what he's done. How yeah. he came came from New York, started writing, and he went to NYU. I heard all. I mean, he had just bought a house, <laughs> and, 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 and man, we were done with dinner, and this fucking guy didn't ask shit One about me. About no, man, and, yeah. and and this is where I'll give Jay his his props too, man. Okay, so six months six months later, we got the script. I get it, you know, and then he gets it, and then I, and then Jay calls me and goes, Willie. I read it, bro. It was horrible, man. Everything was like uh, piñatas and tortillas and like, like, there was well, no... Which I got a big girl hungry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. It was, it, we, we were like the car... Okay, here it was. It was people laughing at us, not with us. Yeah. You know? What and was the premise of it, though? The premise was actually the, the, Jay's job, what Jay did before he became a comedian, which he worked at a dealership, and he was the guy that could talk to the salesman and 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 the guys in the in the uh, department, in the, yeah, yeah, the the tools, in the, in parts, the, in the parts, parts department, yeah. yeah. So he was the in between guy, and that's what he did be before he became a comedian. So he says, "I see you as that guy." But you know what? I like that already. Like you have to have an idea. So you have a place like a car place, mm -hmm. right? The people go in there. You see different customers, you see the salesmen, and the guys in between. So he can come and be in the offices, and yeah. then he can be with the mechanics. And you got a little bit of the yeah. yin and yang yeah, of the yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. So I, I get. I mean, I get. That. Yeah, but the guy, but the, the guy who who wrote it, man, it was horrible, man. It was <laughs> the guy had no. He was brainless, basically, man. Yeah. It was like, uh, you know, it was m more buffooning than. Than, than when they buffoon an Italian in, in a sitcom. You know, the yeah. Italian's always the dumb guy. You yeah. know? It was like way more than that. And, I, and then anyways, Jay goes, Willie, I can't, I can't produce this, man. And, he, and then, you know, he just said, man, I apologize. I gave it my all. You know, I know, hey, I don't want to do this either, man. I, I don't, I, I don't want to do the script. And then we just, you know, kind of would let that uh, go. But I continued. I think I, think I still had another three times yep. with him on the, on the Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. But uh, and where did you meet him when he first saw you and and at the comedy magic Cause that, club? Because that's a big that's a big deal, man. To do one show ten times over, especially the Tonight Show, that, he was that was, an, it was yeah. a big time, yeah. But it was, I mean, one one thing uh, he saw me at 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 the at the club, and I, I, I was leaving, I was going home. I worked a, a five minute set that I was 
actually working on for another show. You know, I was like MTV Kamikaze yeah. or something. You know, remember oh, those yeah, shows? Kamikaze. There was like a bunch of them. VH1 Spotlight. Right. Uh, I was working for five. You know, working a five minute set, and 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 Jimmy. Uh, is it Jimmy Brogan? Yeah, Jimmy Brogan. Jimmy Brogan, right? Jimmy like right, kind of ran up to me when I was leaving. He goes, "Hey," because Jay wants to talk to you. I go. You know, you're a kid, man. You're a comedian. You're, you're, I was like, Jay, Jay, Jay Leno? Yeah. <laughs> so, I like, you know, I'm, I'm only used to seeing this guy's face on television, right? I'm doing the Tonight Show. And I, I go there, and he's, he's eating his wings, man. He's like, he's eating his, he looks up at me and goes, hey. He goes, hey, kid. He goes, I like, I like your comedy. And I go, thank you, sir. You know, I, I felt like, you know, I felt like it was like an uncle talking to me, you know? <laughs> yeah. He goes, uh, yeah, um, you know, I don't know, man. Uh, the next thing you know... Um, I was doing the show a month later, right. man. A month later, and it, it, it was uh, it was a good experience, even just meeting. Like I remember when I went to his house. I mean, I got to know him and Mavis, his wife. Right. I got to know them pretty good, man. I remember I had a broken down Celica, like tore up, bro. <laughs> I mean, it was the ugliest thing you could. I mean, this chick, it, it, I it was the car itself was a cock blocker, bro. You know what, <laughs> what, I, mean? You know what I mean? Like the, like <laughs> chicks would look at the car and I, like I ain't fucking this guy. <laughs> And, and I remember going, uh, driving through Beverly Hills looking for Jay's house, man. And I'm literally stopping because I'm looking at, remember, remember, back there there was no phones, no, none no. of that shit. Bro, you wrote it on a piece of paper. And, I know, yeah. and I'm going 1221, 1221, and I'm driving. And I didn't know there was a patrol car behind me. Just every time I stopped, he would stop. And then all of a sudden I go, holy shit. So I, <laughs> I went again, again, and finally I go, that's his house. And when I, when I stopped, that's when the cop put the, the, the strawberries and everything, man. <sighs> And then uh, he's like, uh, "Hey, uh, what, what are you doing? Uh, checking out these houses?" I said, "I said, <laughs> I got, I, said, I, have one. One. <laughs> I said, I have a friend, I have a friend." I go, "I go, who's your friend?" I said, "Jay Leno." Yeah, sure, Jay Leno. Jay Leno's my friend too. You know, he tells me like, like that. that? Oh, yeah, like that? that? Okay, yeah, he's my friend too. I go, "No, bro, that's his house right there." I go, "Matter of fact, I have his code right here because you know you have a code yeah, to yeah. talk to the yeah. intercom." And I go, "Yeah, let me see you. Let me see you call Leno." So I said, "Yeah," I go, right, and he's like, "Hey, Willie." You know, you know yep. got that squeaky yeah, Mickey yeah. Mouse voice. Oh, come on out, man. So <laughs> I go, and then the cop's Mickey like, the cop just shook his head and, and took off, man. <laughs> but but I, I got to know him at a different level, bro. You know, I got yeah. to know him as a comic. Is man. he a good dude or not? He, he's a good dude, bro. He's, tell he, the truth, man. No, no, no. If he was a dick, bro, I would tell you, man. I, I would tell you he was, a, he, he was a good dude. He does a lot of things that... Man, I know that he doesn't like people knowing about a lot of things. He donates a lot of money, and I know I'm probably going to get shit for this. No, no, don't say it then. Don't say it. He donates money to causes that, that, um, and he doesn't want people to know. He's just, I'll do it, but I don't want people to know, man. You know? Very pro police. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Very pro police. A lot of fucking mamones are. (laughs) Well, hey, bro, I almost (laughs) became a cop. Did you ever ever, uh, go to the academy and. Fill out application and do all that? No, I booking slip. Book yeah. Did you want to be a police officer? I, I was in, bro. I was in with all my friends. Um like five. How my, did that happen? Find my how, from from a bus stop or how do the, how do you guys find people? No, it's uh you go downtown. Right, they have you go commercials, to they have commercials. You go to and all c- yeah, city. Well, you know, bro, listen, back then. That's why I'm surprised that it wasn't that you didn't want to be a cop because we had Beretta, Starsky and Hutch, right. the rookies, SWAT, Barnaby Jones, Cannon, Streets of San well, Francisco, Streets of San Francisco, <laughs> Adam Twelve, Adam Twelve, Rockford Files. That was a big one. Adam yeah. Twelve, uh, Dragnet, Dragnet, Dragnet. Uh, what else? Uh, 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 and then you had Police Woman, Police Woman, <laughs> and then you, you had Officer Love, that black chick. You get Christy Love. So it was it was inundated. <laughs> it was like we were programmed. To think like yeah. that was a cool thing to do, you know? And I'm sure that was one of the... Adam if, 12 was the biggest recruiter they had back then, back when I came. Was, it one of your, was that one of your reasons again? Was it, was no, it, my reason was I already knew I wanted to be... When I came out of the Army, a cop saved me from the streets, saved okay. my life. So when I got out of the Army, I wanted to become a cop and give back what that, gave, what that guy gave to me. And he saved my life, so I wanted to be able to help some other kid. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, one of those... Uh, like feel good stories, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just wanted chicks and I wanted to carry a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if I, if I would have told you, because you got the interview, would you, would you have pulled over chicks just to talk to them? Probably, bro. I probably would have been a dirty. <laughs> cop. I, I, hey, girl, I'm be honest. I, I would have been a dirty cop, bro. I, I would have. What if they had big steps? No, would you no, let them go? No, uh, yeah, I would have. <laughs> no, listen. I know I would have justified me pulling over a drug dealer and going, "Look, motherfucker." Um, you got ten grand. <laughs> That's a police officer. Yeah. 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 Look, you got ten grand right there. 
you know, I could take you in. It's going to cost you about five grand to get your ass out. You're not going to get this money back. So look, man, um, five for you, five for me. Get the fuck out of here. You know? That's oh, not well, a police that, officer. That, that, what, <laughs> what job is that? That's got to be a vice. <laughs> Well, yeah, that'd be you know. No, but if you pull somebody that's over, advice. if you pull no, somebody yeah. over and see it in the back seat, that that's uh, in plain view. <laughs> yeah, that, I can that, say half of that is mine. That's that, better call that Saul. Never, that that <laughs> that's where you and I differ. That shit never crossed my mind. No, you right? see, that, yeah. that's what I'm saying, man. That's why yeah. I didn't become a cop. Yeah, that, that, why? Because if you say it did, they're gonna pull you pull you in for <laughs> yeah, sexual limitations. That's just the way I felt, you know. what? I'm mad enough to stand up for what I believe is right. You never had the urge to get never. The fucking no, it was one of the, no, it was one of the questions never. they ask you in the interview. Oh, because when you, when, yeah. when you they do they ask you. Yeah, they, they ask. They, uh, one of the questions they ask you would, would you, you be putting bail cite your mother if you trap if you stopped your mother in a traffic stop would you give her a ticket? That's one. What's the, the right answer? I wouldn't. My Depend mom on what she did. My mom didn't drive. So I didn't give a shit. Yeah, one of the Mexican moms that didn't drive. No, no. Here's all, <laughs> all white moms drove Mexican moms. I the third and the And I'll go did no, your mom drive? She, she drove, man. She, my grandmother she, drove. She, 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 yeah, my mom drove, man. All right, so anyway, so just stick to the cops. So then you guys go to where? You had, where'd you go apply? City Hall? City Hall, bro. And, that, and, and that, I remember <laughs> I, when, when, they, when they ask you the question, it's, it's a civilian, somebody from the city, and a, a police official. And I, worked was, the, do, I worked for the sheriff's Oh, you were the sheriff's okay, And so, it, was, it was all deputies in there. There were oh, no okay. civilians. No, no, they're they're civilian. They're, and, they, and then they shoot questions at you. You just, you just, you sit there, man, with your suit, with your polyester suit. And, 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 they, and they, I remember one of the questions was, uh, if you were working, uh, uh, there was a robbery and you were in there with your partner and they broke a vending machine and there was uh, uh, some coins on the floor and you saw your partner pick up a quarter and put it in his pocket, would you say anything? All right, let, well, wait, okay, let's say, would you? I mean, I know what the answer is supposed to be. <laughs> no, no, you, you, know, you, see, you don't even know. You just got to go in there and yeah, rapid and fire for, this shit at you. For a quarter, no. No. Yeah. Okay. No. What, I, what I said, my answer, when I was 20, 21 years old when I answered this, I said, I would pull him aside and I said, look, bro, a quarter is no big deal. If next time just ask me, you don't have to do that. That's what I told the, the, in the interview. And, and, I, and, 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 and they said, so you wouldn't report it? I said no, I wouldn't report that. I wouldn't report a quarter. I would have I've talked with them, and then and then they start then they start getting tricky. Would you report a dollar? <laughs> yeah. Would you report ten dollars? Would you where, where does it stop? So I'm we know like, there's a line. Yeah. Now, anyways, man, there's all, all these. Don't they don't they say like if you if somebody put a hundred dollars in your locker, would you keep it? I think that's one of the tests in New York or something like Nothing the cops. Like that. The cops. Um, at least in a, what's that American Gangster? They gave them, they left some money there in the thing, yeah. and if you take it, you're in, and if you don't take it, you're not in. Uh, you know, and I think Russell Crowe he, he didn't take it. Yeah, he didn't take it. So okay, so uh, then uh, so then and then I was in, bro. And then you go through, you take the physical agility, and it's funny because when you're there, it's surreal. Because I remember seeing this thing on Charlie's Angels, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the entrance, <laughs> right? Yeah, Charlie's Angels. You know, yeah. it was, and you do the physical, you know, you, uh, yeah. you, you jump a fence. You had the T-shirt you that had your name stenciled. No, not part? yet. No, you're just in your regular clothes. No, <laughs> oh, no, you're no that's when you're in there, bro. Yeah. And you carry this dummy. You got to drag this dummy, and then. You, uh, what else? You, do you have to drag a dummy? Yeah. 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 You have to do all this stuff. And then, you, so you, you, you know, you pass that. And then they interview your neighbors. They interview your neighbors and they ask about you. And then they interview jobs that you used to work at. And I, I, I used to work for the Broadway, man. I used to arrest shoplifters. So it was kind of. Oh, you know, so you're already kind of in. It, <laughs> yeah. You wanted to be in No, it. bro. But I just wanted to meet chicks, bro. You know what I mean? It was, it was, come on. I was, I, was, I was 20 years old. All the hot chicks were good. I remember bro, my, I spent my whole day. I, I remember one time the guy who was in charge of all the Broadways, you know, which is a store like Macy's today, right? Broadway was yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So it was uh, the guy who that was an ex sheriff, by the way, who that's a lot of them do that when they mm -hmm. retire, man. He handled like six stores and he called me in one time and goes, Willie, man, I got to tell you, you have the worst arrest record of anybody. <laughs> I remember him telling me that. And I, and I, was, I know, sir, it's just that, uh, you know, they're not, I don't know what it is. I, I had to come up, you know, I had, to, I had to like tap dance my way out of that shit. You know, I was like, yeah, you know, when I'm here, they're not stealing, man, you know? <laughs> I don't know what it is. But, but, I'm too intimidating. But, but, I'm too good at this. No, but the truth <laughs> of the matter, man, I used to see like, there would be a, a girl in like the, the, the you know, the, the certain department, the shoe department, you know, hot chick, and I'd be like, what's up, Lisa? And they're like, and they're like you know, that's a nice dress. 
you know, and then, and then, and then I'm looking at you, and then, oh, hi, you know, and, and, and so that's all I did. All I did was like, so, so where'd you go to high school? You know, like, right. I know, like, the store's getting stolen. But everything. were you, in, were you undercover or? or I was you, undercover. Oh. undercover. Oh. But, so anyways, bro, so I got my letters. I was happy. I got my letters, LAPD, and, and you passed, and I, I scored an, an 88 or, I, I'm either, I'm confused whether it was 88 or 91, bro. That for uh, the oral, because that's the probably big one. 91. Yeah, and I, I did, anyways. Uh, Why you say was, probably 91? Because at that time there were a bunch of applicants going in. If you didn't make at least 90, yeah, that oh, was yeah, a cutoff. yeah, that was you still, it. You still passed, but you weren't going to be accepted unless you were 90. Oh, or yeah, you had to score high. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's true. And um, so I went to go party, man, at Quiet Canyon, uh, you know, back when the, in the, in the, the, first was a, the party days. Did you ever bro. go in there? You were married already. I was married already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been there, but I was married. That yeah, was a spot, man. That was a spot, bro. So I remember I was there with some buddies of mine, that, which they all became cops. I mean, two of them, re- wow. Two of my buddies just retired. Um, and uh, anyways, man, I was, I had a, bro. I was a stereotypical LA kid, man. I had the 1958 drag top, uh, rag top uh, bug. You know, lower. Oh, yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Shit. With, with, the, with the blasting expose. You know what I mean? Nah, right? expose. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with the ducktail back here, yeah. the disco ducktail. Oh, shit. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so I remember, uh, you know, I got pulled over, man, by uh, CHP and I got arrested. And that was it, bro. And that was it, man. They for, tell for DUI? You, for DUI, yeah. And then they tell you. You didn't tell him, hey, man, I'm trying I to. T- bro, cool. I have my paperwork right here. I showed him everything to the CHP. And he goes, yeah, that's nice. You can try again in five years. That's what he told me. That's oh. nice. Is that what it is? I don't that's know how cool. long it is. Yeah, <laughs> but he said you can try again in five years. They, 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 <laughs> that's cold. What the, I know they make you wait. I don't know. I, I, there was a magic year, but they want you to stay out of trouble for X amount because if they, okay, they say two years. And they bring you in, and then two and a half years, you know, six months later, you get arrested DUI again. So they want to make sure that it's not an issue. Is that especially, what, especially with booze. Is that what kept you out? Yeah, yeah. That was I, it. Yeah, and then I got. So you were planning to go. I was gonna be. That was all I ever wanted to be. Oh, you know, because of the. He was already then, accepted. Yeah. He was already accepted. He had an academy date. Yeah. <laughs> he was accepted. You're across the finish line. Oh, fuck, so. Man. So okay. All he had to do, <laughs> stay sober, come on. But no, on my mind. Hey, bro. Uh yeah ah that, that was it huh yeah wow, man uh, mm. um interesting I'm see um so were you all fucked up or you were just on the line no, or no, I was I was uh point zero point zero nine no. zero point what point zero point zero eight yeah. is yeah. point zero eight is legally drunk yeah. point zero nine point zero nine it's, it's it's no no they yeah. And it was funny. It was funny because I was all discoed out, man. And I, I went into, uh, I, I mean, you know, you go to a club, you're fucking disco. You got <laughs> yeah. your cologne on. I remember, and um, I remember they took me. They took me to to um, what is it? Uh, when they, when, Station. No, no, no. And then they take you to process you to uh, the county jail. IRC. Yeah. Damn. And I remember I was sitting there. I was handcuffed in there. And I remember Damn, all my Willie. friends. All my friends told me, man, Willie. Um, if you ever go to jail, bro, you just you, you gotta hit somebody first. You gotta hit somebody <laughs> first. He, he goes, don't don't ever. He goes, even if you lose, you gotta hit first. And uh, it goes because you'll be their bitch for the rest of like time you're there. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh man, I'm gonna be here a long fucking time. You know, I you, you don't know. I mean, I hadn't gone to jail. I, I, you know, that you'd never it, had any it, run-ins I, I with know, the police. No, of course I, not, because I, you're, you're I, on no. your way to being a cop. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I did bad shit, but I never got caught. Right. You know? I mean, and it's funny because I used to arrest shoplifters, and I was a great shoplifter myself. <laughs> so, I, so I felt like a hypocrite. You know, that's why I would let a lot of these what kids did you, go. What, what, what were things that you could take? Levi's. I would always take Levi's and Lightning Bolt shirts because those Lightning, Lightning remember Lightning Bolt and Quicksilver? Oh, yeah. Those, like the polo, the, the polos? Yeah, the polos. I'm still uh, the, the Ralph Lauren polos. What about, how did you fucking steal jeans? Oh, bro. It, it's, uh, you take sweats. You go to the store, oh. and, you, and, you, and you wear baggy sweats. And then you go in there, and you get Levi's. And then you put the sweats on top, and then you just you know act normal. Anyway, that was that was my move. That was That's my go-to. Good. <laughs> bro, I didn't have any money, man. We have, That's we, we good, to, when you go to high school, bro. Kids are watching you. If you they'll oh, if, right. you, if, you the same, if you wear the same if you wear the same shirt twice, bro, they're like, oh look at this poor motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's so I was, I was like. Uh, you Did know? you only steal around back to school or all the whole year? No, back to school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, you never shoplifted ever? When oh, you're... yeah, I did. All right, all right, bro. Was... Yeah. So. And then, no. And, and you yeah. never you never yeah. did? No, and no, you no. never got caught, though? No, never got, no. no, I never got caught, bro. I was good, you know. I stole a car. Never got caught. 
you know we took a gear one time you know and the gears oh, yeah, and the bugs gear? and all that yeah, yeah. So, yeah. oh you were yeah. in the bugs huh yeah yeah, yeah. we uh I, we um broke into some houses and never got caught i was like 16 15 you know, yeah. you're the fucking serpico. What are the statute of limitations on these? Fuck, am I glad they didn't make it, brother? <laughs> <laughs> hey, all my buddies got in, bro, and they're the same mamonas, bro. They did the same shit I did. And I, so I tell them that now, not that they're retired because they have kids, you know. And and I'll be like, your dad used to shoplift, and they're like, oh, shit, like, shut the fuck up, bro. But you so, didn't go to the service or anything, right? No, bro, no, no. And then when I was all depressed, man, I was, uh, you know. Uh, a buddy of mine, when I woke up, there was a big letter that he wrote. And I guess, you know, when you're when you're drunk, you're saying shit that, that you just, you know, you're in another zone. Mm -hmm. and, and then he goes, hey, Willie, man, you're talking about killing yourself. He goes, man, you should stop that. You should be a comedian because you're always a shit talker. And that's that letter is the one that got me to go to the comedy store, which I think really? one thing you and I have in common, and I might be wrong, man, you, you got past... They didn't pass. Uh, what was her name? Mitzi never passed you huh, at the store. No, she never passed me either, bro. Yeah. And and what did she say? What did she say to you? Well, I told her. I told her because they were having auditions for the, for uh and and listen, I regret it now. I'm older, right? I mean, obviously, you, you look at your life and things you could have done different. Yeah. That w that's one of them. Yeah. How old were you at the time you were doing this? 24, that 20, way. 24. Because yeah, about 24. No more than 24, man. And, and she, they, they would have uh, Mitzi Shore would show up at the comedy store and sit, sit in, in the back, back with a little the, light, little, make yeah. notes, yep. And then always some ass kisser next to her. Yep. <laughs> some guy that fucking <laughs> yeah. licked balls, man, would always be next to her. Yep. And, uh, and, and I remember uh, there was a flyer, and, and, and Mitzi says, we're looking for, specifically, I'm looking for Latino comedians. And I was pumped up, man. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Latino comedians are looking for. So I get there. And, uh, and she has us upstairs in the ballet room with no audience, oh. with no audience yeah. and just her. And it was me, Gilbert Esquiva, Johnny Sanchez, Carlos Oscar, just a bunch of us. So that's why the story can, it, it can be verified, you know? Yeah. I was up there and I was telling my joke like this with no audience. And I just stopped, man, in the middle of the set. And I said, and like I said, I would, you know, I'm not proud of, not, you know, proud of it, but I said, Hey, you fucking bitch. I said, how the fuck could you do that to us? How the fuck you have the Latinos up here with no audience, but the blacks and the whites and everybody else gets an audience, but you have us up here like fucking animals. I said, fuck you. And I, I had the mic and I threw it. And I remember at the ballet room, you would come down Downstairs. and I could hear her loud. I, I heard her loud. Who the fuck is that? Like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I fucking, I ran back up and I said, my name is Willie Barcena, you bitch, and don't you ever fucking forget it. Ooh. And she never did, bro, because I never was allowed to play there again. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, man. Never. I remember my, my agent tried to get me in and go, what the fuck did you do there, Willie? Ah, it was a long time ago, man. You know? But uh, that was my experience. It was kind of hard enough to crack over there, man. It was tough, yeah. tough to get in when she was around because she looked at, you had to get past her. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, the guy who got Is she still alive? No, 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 she, no. The guy who got passed was uh, Mencia, remember? Yeah, yeah, he got. But was it, he her driver? Or he was no, the doorman. No, Quint, Quint, guy named Quint something, Quint something. But uh, wasn't he Mencia the doorman or something? He could have been. I don't know. But this is what I'm talking about. Okay, when when and I go back to this what we were talking about earlier, bro. Uh, is is when when a um. Like Chris Tucker, when he did Def Jam, yeah, I remember, man, all the comedians were showing him love, yep. calling him, everything. When I did the Tonight Show, not right. one, not one Latino comedian, not one, called me up and congratulate me, right. not one. You know, like, hey, congratulations, we're proud of you, ni madre, bro. And I was like, all right, fuck it. That's when, I, uh, I, you know, I, I remember trying to build the fucking, the, right. you, you know, I, I, I had a room in East LA where I had Felipe. Right. I remember Fluffy, and the Fluffy, you know, listen, I, I know that, I don't know if his memory uh, uh, works against him or what, but the way he did comedy, I did comedy at Fluffy's college when he was in Long Beach, and he came up to me a little gordito like, hey, I, I want to do comedy, right? And I was like, yeah, I, I, I do this room in Montebello, which used to get packed, man. Which one was that one? I, it, it was, they changed the name every year because they killed some, somebody every every year. <laughs> um, it was, um... <laughs> No, it was uh, right there on Whittier uh, Boulevard. Was it? Tortillas. It was called Tortillas. Oh, off the sixty. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, off the sixty. 10? It's yeah. called Tortillas. It had several names, bro. And um, 
Anyways, uh, I remember... And it was uh, a restaurant, right? It was a restaurant. And then they would do... They would do comedy, man. And I I, 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 uh, I remember I would... I was like a, a tough coach, bro. I coached comedians the way I coached baseball. And by the way, my, that's my son back there. He oh, can I, tell I, you. He, 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 up, yeah, he, he played Division two college, bro. He was a shortstop, third baseman, pitcher in college. Where did you go to school? Uh, San Francisco. Shit. Yeah, and what I, happened? What, what? Yeah, no, but I'm, no, he just got just graduated, bro. Oh, oh congratulations! He just gra- <laughs> so I, he can tell you, I was a mean motherfucker, bro. I would like they, I, he's, like, he's nodding you know, his head, yes. You know, no. <laughs> what would you say? No, no, no but I catch the ball, motherfucker. Okay, That's so, what so, but part, but, but, <laughs> but part of you, part of you <laughs> so would, I, would be a coach. Part of you would be even coach com- to comedians. You found yeah. a lot of guys. Yeah, right? yeah, bro. And I know I hurt feelings and. I remember uh, Fluffy would go on stage and grab the mic and pull it and goes, let me get this out the way so you can see me. And I said, bro, stop doing that shit. I go, e- e- uh, Louis Anderson, that's, ah. that's his bit. I go, don't fucking do that. And I remember this kid was so soft, bro, that he, it hurt his feelings. Yep. And, and every time I would talk to him like that, he was soft, man. And I, and I could see, man, see, I, I, I came from dysfunction. I came from everything was like, hey, motherfucker, ha. I just negativity. Yeah. So t- my teaching process, although I had the same goal as a guy that's going to teach psychologically, but, you yeah. know, but I was a dick. You but know? but did you did you did you want to be a teacher? Did you want to be a, a mentor? No, I wanted all of us to get better. Right. I just wanted us to get better, bro. Because there was no there was no group. I remember doing. I ran at Carlos and Charlie's. I still have the flyers. Nineteen ninety three, and and it cost me. I mean, for me, that was a lot of money, right? But and I had Luke Torres there. I had all these guys, man. And I I, I wanted to do a Latino night, and then uh. And bro, we only had eight people, right? So, and, and we're charging five dollars. So I made like forty bucks, and I told each comedian was gonna pay, get paid two hundred, yeah. right? And that was a lot for the, for yeah, us uh, back yeah, then. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, that'd so be a lot now. Every com- than, yeah. I remember every comedian was cool, bro. Every comedian goes, Willie, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay me. The only one who fucking was that drilled me was uh, was Mencia. Mencia goes, look, bro, you're man of your word. I said, I'm man of my word. You said two hundred. Where's my two hundred? He goes, I'm not leaving until I get my two hundred. So I had, I, I literally, I, I remember I had a girlfriend there at the time. I had to borrow money from her, you know? Oh. And I said, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, and you paid him? I had to pay Carlos, yeah, yeah. Oh. He was the only one that was a verga, bro. I mean, but that was always Carlos, man. Carlos was the only one. I mean, listen, I know, I know he's on this, on this wave of, of redemption, right? He's, he's, he's clearing, like, what happened to him? You know, he, he got punished, right, for what he used to do. We all know what he did, yeah. right? I mean, He'll never get a nickel out of me now after hearing that story. <laughs> but get, but a redemption, like he's trying to. Uh, what's he trying to do? No, I think he. I think I think he he knows in some ways he did he did some things he shouldn't have done as a comedian. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know what that is. I mean, Joe Rogan yeah. fucking exposed it, oh, right? Yeah. You know. But to me, like I I had him at my house about seven months ago, and I invited him. Another comedian goes, you know what? You should call Carlos, bro. You know. And I I think. And at that time, I've, I, the reason I invited him, and, and you're here, and I think you would like your, your opinion on this, I think the punishment should fit the crime. So, yeah, he did something bad, but we're going on two decades now that, 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 that people longer. are... Longer. Longer that, that people are going like, all right, you stole, you fucking... All right, it's enough, man. I, I, at one point, you got to say, okay, you did your time. You know, because, you know, it was... out. I mean, shit, they buried him on South Park. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, that oh was God. fucking horrible, man. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, shit. Like, was uh, that the fish sticks one? Yeah, uh, that, yeah. Was, that was Kanye. Was, yeah, was that yeah, the yeah, same yeah, thing? yeah, same oh. one. So, yeah. uh, uh, but but um, why did that guy feel like he had to use things that weren't his? Uh, I mean, see, uh, why did, I, why did he I, feel that? I feel, man, that in like in the regular streets, you got guys who steal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guys who really rob, and in our comedy world. There's also those personalities, man. And I and I feel, I don't know, listen, man, I'm not in the guy's, I don't know, I can't talk for him. I can only tell you what I think. And I, I know he has 10 brothers and sisters and group in the projects. And I think one of the things that he hated the most was being poor. And so I could connect with that, man, because I know what it's like to miss meals, bro. You know, I know, yeah. I know what it's like to go to bed hungry. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons I always wanted to help other cats out, man, you know. 
Don't look at me. I don't know what it's like to go to bed. Don't, I don't think no. you <laughs> no, he's not. No, it's funny. He's asking me questions when I first got here. Yeah. He asked me about, hey, Willie, did you play baseball? Did you do this? No, bro. Uh, I, I, we didn't have any money. And so when these guys, when me, my other boy, I got an old, a boy that's a year and a half older than him. They, they were both actually played with Steve Garvey's son. Uh, uh, his, his, my, my. Was he good? Yeah, my, my older brother played with Ryan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I oh, played sure. with Ryan. Played with Ryan. Ryan got oh. drafted by the, by I think it was the, the Rockies. But we also played with uh, Lenny Dykstra's kid. Right. One of his kids was on our travel team. Yeah, let me ask you a question. The older son, the one that played with Steve Garvey's son. Yeah. One of his coach, uh, Clem Bonilla. Did the name ring a bell with you at all? No, man. We had a guy named Mike Spears. Okay. Was our was our, our guy, man. And a lot of those guys got drafted, man. A lot of those guys are were number one guys in, in the nation. But anyways, man, getting but, back. But did you play baseball growing up? No, bro. No, no. I play, okay, football. okay, I did play. Okay, I'll tell you, man. Well, you I, like, I, no, no. you like sports. I'm going to tell you how much I like baseball. I had, a, I had a mother who was evil, man. She's just, she's, she's, she's just a bad person, man. Mm-hmm. We never got along. To the day she died, we didn't get along. She lied. She's a fucking bullshitter. She's not a good person, man. I remember uh, my, I had to be home in the sixth grade, I had to be home by 3 o'clock, by 3.30, I'm sorry, 3.30 I had to be home because she had to go to work. So she had to make sure that I, I was there. And I had signed myself up for Little League, right? Right. For baseball. Yeah. Uh, for parking recs, not a little parking recs. Yeah. And she had said, she had told me no, but I forged her name. You know, and, and Park and Rex, you don't get a uniform. <laughs> you wear your pants, but and a T-shirt, like a, a, a T-shirt, yeah. with yeah. a number on it. Yeah, but, yeah. And and I remember she whooped the shit out of me, man. One of these cordones, man. I got, I got hit with a with one of the things because I went to practice. Yeah. And she said, "Where were you?" I said, "I was at baseball practice." And she started whipping me, right? And you put your hands up. Even though you put your hands up, the whip goes around, hits you in the face, you know. Yeah. So, um, she said, "She so better quit." Bro, do you know that I never missed a practice, man? Like, she would fucking, every, it, it was, it was, I was almost routine, like, clocking in, you know? Like, all right, here goes the ass whooping. Yeah, yeah. You know? Wow. That's, I remember that's I, a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to play, and I, I, I tried to tell these cats, like, when they were little, you know? I go, man, I didn't, I didn't have this opportunity, you know? Because I was, I was immigrant, bro. I right. sold oranges on State Street when I came from Mexico. Wow. I didn't even speak English, man. It was, it was uh, English was it was hard for me to pick up English because at the house everybody was Spanish, right? Yeah. And and then I had an uncle that if you try to speak English, he put you down, man. He's like, oh, I I see, I've been el americano, you know, yeah. like you fucking bust your balls instead of encouraging you, he would put you yeah. down, man. So so, anyways, man. But I think so, so. But was your dad around too, and your dad and your uh, mom? That piece of shit, bro. He um, <laughs> she he left uh oh, and uh and Juarez. He he took off with some chick he met, and so and he never came back. Never. Well, he tried coming back and being a dad for a day when I was sixteen. Like I got back from high school and I'm walking. He's in the living room, and oh. then, and then I see my mom. She looks at me. I look at him. I'm like and I was sixteen, and I was like, I, was, I think I was seventeen. I said, what "Fuck, are you doing here, man?" And he goes. He goes, he said, I don't know what he said, bro, but I said, better get the fuck out of here. When I come back, I slammed the door, and I left, and I came back, I don't know, six, seven hours later, and he was gone. Yeah. But that was my only, uh, but, man, you know, he was a piece of shit, man. He was a piece of shit of a human being. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's um, man, I, you know, to have a family like that and to want to start your life, it puts you in a bit of a fucking, you're like, just yeah, waiting yeah. for the next yeah, or yeah. something to take no. advantage over you, the next thing yeah. to happen, right? There's no way you can fucking be in peace. I, I, that's a legit age. trauma. That I'm just really weird. still kind of in shock. Every, not everyone, I'll say a lot, so many comedians that I've met have problems such as yourself, you know, in childhood. Mm-hmm. Parents, <laughs> grandparents, you know, whatever it is, but they were traumatized as kids and now they're doing comedy and they've come out of it and uh, I'm I'm not glad that you went through all the trauma. I'm I'm happy for your comedic. Uh, no, but you know what? Listen, bro, uh, Gil, and here's the people have asked me, and I'm sure you've gotten this too, George. Where, where you, there's always that one person that says, "Man, uh, comedians, you, you you guys suffer a lot." I said, "No, motherfucker, we all suffer. Every human being here. If you talk, I don't care if the guy's a pilot. I don't care whatever. Mm-hmm. They all have a story. Mm-hmm. The you." 
Bro, Gil, you're one of the first guys I meet that fucking had this fucking situation where it was like, you know, you skipped to Disneyland with your dad, you know? <laughs> I never went. My wife made fun of me. I never went to Disneyland as a kid. Never. Not until I graduated from high school and because her family used to take her to Disneyland. And I did. So I didn't get that why, shit. Why you, why you came from, your upbringing is a, a pretty stable. Which is yeah, and it not, was. And that's not the norm. No. That's not the norm in our society. No. If it was the norm, we wouldn't have so many people on, 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 on uh, taking med meds. I you know? So, yeah. so how, how long were your mom and dad married? Over 50 years yeah, before wow, my dad man. passed away. Oh, wow. And now I've been married 51. You see so what I mean? Like, yeah, it, yeah, so yeah, you don't yeah. think it makes that's a difference being at home? Yeah. yeah. Stability. So, yeah. Having both parents yeah. at home makes yeah. a huge difference. Having to wear my sisters, I had six sisters, no brothers. Having to wear theirs hand me down yeah. was kind of embarrassing sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of my jokes. That was my first Tonight Show joke. <laughs> yeah. I wear my sisters' hand me downs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had jeans with zippers in the back. <laughs> you can pull okay. off a blouse. Okay, yeah. Carlos, you're stealing my stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you stole my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was 1995, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody remembers their, their, their first time on, uh, on on the Tonight Show, man. 1995, man. You know. This guy, you weren't even born yet, Fabian. Uh, I was really yeah, really. Give me through, walk me through your first time at the Tonight Show. Oh, I, was, I was nervous as fuck, bro. What time did you I, get there I, early? I, I, and then... Yeah, they sent a limo for you. So you, mm -hmm. you like, I, you kind of make, I, for me, bro, I was, I was making the limo wait just so my neighbors could see. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and they're saying everything a little loud. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to the Tonight Show now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Tonight Show, you know? And then, and then the driver and, they take you and uh, Sylvester Stallone was the uh, was the oh is the guest was the guest yeah oh, that's big and it that's was big. yeah it was I was here's a guy that I had watching Rocky you know the Rockies oh, yeah. movies and I was like and he was a gentleman I'm sure you met him yeah. a few times bro he, how was he with you man was great he, great okay yeah he's great yeah yeah he was a gentleman with me uh, which I was happy man because half these guys that and what did you we, think when you were a kid like so you're a kid from the barrio right and then you're doing comedy and then you go to the Tonight Show and then you see Sylvester Stallone bro it was surreal man what did you, yeah uh, it was right? it was just weird it was almost like you 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 pause as you're talking you're pausing you know you can't even act normal you got you're going like you're talking and you're going you're going yeah so I, 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 you know, let's say you say oh hey good luck on the show tonight Willie right and so and, and then I'm just yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's my as first your parents. Oh. That's my uh, my oh, first yeah. 1995. Uh, wow! Oh, that's awesome, man! Shit, that's nice. Yeah, man, and, and that's the only uh, nice clothes I had. I think that's <laughs> what I wore in my interviews for my police, <laughs> <laughs> for my police interviews, man. You know, you know. Sylvester's also very pro police. Yeah. Stallone. I think most of the country is. You know, he, he, I, he, I think he's I think I think what happens is is the people that hate the police get uh, uh, get more attention. You know, it's like I, I, it's like having kids. You know, uh, the kid that's a piece of shit is the one that everybody's going to talk about, right? You know, so I think that's what it is with with, with pro police and people that are anti police. Because I think, well, how, how did how did police get on the hook for all the shit that's that's gone on in the streets? A few bad apples. You know, the news media picks it up, they burn them. You know, and and so it they don't burn them they tell the truth you know and so but it gets a lot of attention so it gets all the naysayers see we've been telling you all this time they're bad they're bad they're bad but when you look at all the cops that have been bad i don't care if they're the, the worst thing to me in law enforcement is dirty cop because it makes us all look bad right and so wait wait wait, wait. that's a that's a what's a dirty cop oh uh, a cop that's selling drugs adopt this killing what, people what, what, got raping people okay 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 what what, what about a guy that busts a guy right and uh, a bank robber, and uh, $10,000 falls out of the bag. <laughs> oh, that, you keep no. mentioning $10,000. No, like no, he's a dirty cop. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. He's a dirty cop. Yeah. I, I'd go into crime scenes where there's you know, a drug ripoff, so there's thousands of dollars out there. Never once did I ever think of picking up a dollar. First, When there's money involved, first thing you did was give me a photographer in here, take a picture of this shit before it started getting legs. Yeah. You know, so uh, that never crossed my mind. And that's part of my upbringing because the only thing my dad embedded in us, don't be a thief and don't be a liar. Yeah. So he succeeded on one of them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I never was a thief. But uh, don't lie and don't be, now, don't well, be a You thief. know, don't lie to me. Uh, the reason I, 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 that lesson is funny. See, you, you, your, your dad taught you that. You know who taught me that? The streets, man. Yeah. The streets. I I remember being uh, in Boyle Heights. I used to live on on Kingston near near uh, Morengo, and uh, I remember being uh, eight years old, 
on the State Street Park. I was walking home from school. I used to go to Bridge, Bridge Street School, and I remember I, I stole the yo-yo, man, from the park and rec. Right. And, and you know, you would back then you would give something to the to the director, and then they hand you a ball. Right, they were like a basketball. Well, you, you had got, to give them like your driver's you license give, you, or, or no, your jacket. Shoes. Yeah. yeah, oh, your no, jacket. No, 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 yeah. driver's. You're a kid. You don't have yeah, driver's yeah, license. Yeah. But I remember, I remember, uh, I saw a yo-yo and I said, "Oh shit!" Because I got mine, whatever I had, and I saw the yo-yo. I put it, and I'm walking home, and I was on that on that uh, the, the bridge overlooking uh, the ten on, on mm-hmm. State Street. And uh, back then, now it has a fence. Yeah, back right. then it had no fence. It was just like three feet. Yeah. And I remember this cholo came running. Like, to me, it was big because I was in third grade. He must have been in sixth grade. But he was, <laughs> you know, third grade or sixth grade. That's, yeah. that's a big dude. Yeah. So I remember he goes, hey, motherfucker. Because he goes, he goes, get my yo-yo? And I said, no, nah, man. He fucking got my pockets. What's this, motherfucker? And he grabbed me by my shirt and my ass. And he hung half my body over Whoa. the thing. And he goes, you going to steal, motherfucker? You going to steal? And I go, no, no, bro. I'm sorry, Holmes. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spencer. You know, and then he put me back down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. But that's the shit that I learned, like, right away. Like, all right, you can't be lying out here, you yeah. know, because you ain't going to make it, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, that shit was real to me. So that he went back my... there to try to get his, his yo-yo, and they said, oh, man, that dude took yeah, it. took it right there. Yeah, go get he, him. He was chasing you down. Yeah. So that's where I learned about about Tell the Truth, and that's why so many comedians, I get pissed off at them, man, because in our business, there's a lot of weasels, bro, a lot yeah. of guys who who get in, not because of their talent, because their ability to kiss ass, man, because yeah. there is some kissing ass like we were talking about, like the guy who sits next to, uh, who would sit next to Mitzi Shore. Right. There was always one guy there. Always, yeah, yeah. Puckered up. Yeah. And I was, I was never, man, on a scale of one to ten, and and Hollywood is is and and I, and I had too much street in me because we, it's called networking, right? Right. It's called networking, which you yeah. need. In, mm-hmm. in, in the real world, it's still part of the game. That's it's pretty, played. Yeah, it's part, yeah. yeah. you need networking, and I always felt like I took the streets mentality to Hollywood, where it's like, "Fuck that! I ain't kissing no one's right. ass." Right. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> we we didn't call it networking; we called it kissing ass. Yeah. yeah. So my whole thing was, I didn't kiss no one's ass, and 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 that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, you know do things uh, right. I'm gonna do things right. Was like in the streets, sure. you do things right, man. And back then, what? And back then. How did you think that somebody became successful? Like you went, you went and did these shows, right? And then maybe there would be somebody. At, like if you kept going back, you kept getting better, right? As a stand-up, you kept going back. You try to go to more different places. But then if you were in Hollywood and you went to the comedy store or to the improv, somebody would be in the audience and they would see you and they would say, "Hey, hey man, yeah, uh, how would it. you like to do this?" Yeah. Yeah. As I, actually, one of these cats I, that I met out there uh, uh, said that. Uh, uh, your buddy, man, said that I I knew him from uh, we met in uh, Canada. Oh, Jordy, out there, Jordy, yeah, Jordy yeah. Elmer. He used to be a comic. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, man, but I did a lot. Listen, man, I, I'm not gonna blame. I gotta put a lot of the blame on me too, bro, because I did some stupid shit. I'm, I I chased two hecklers out of the Laugh Factory with the with the mic stand <laughs> oh, shit. down Sunset Strip. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so of all that, the ones that I've heard, I haven't heard that. <laughs> yeah, 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 and and. Uh, and uh, Again, the, what the, the, uh, the manager, the tell, manager. Us what, tell me what happened. Tell us what happened. Did, did one of them have a yo yo in his pocket? <laughs> <laughs> it was probably, bro. It was probably, I don't know. I was getting heckled, and then the guy said, I don't mind if you heckle me, but the guy said something uh, racist, you know, especially back then. You see more Latinos in, in, in the clubs now than you did when we first started. Yeah, oh, bro. yeah, yeah. You would look in the audience at the Ice House. And you probably see okay, three no, Latinos uh, yeah. back then. It wasn't like it is not. A lot of these young comics, they don't fucking know, man. Mm. So. Uh, this guy said something, and I said, "All right, bro, that's pretty funny." I go, "But don't you guys stop saying that shit?" Because see, this mic stand, and the mic stand has a big plate in the bottom. Yeah. I said, "I'm gonna crack you with this thing, man. No, shut the fuck up." So I started continuing, and then he said something, and I jumped off. And uh, there was a little manager there, a little Filipina girl. Remember her, man? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, man. she's like a cute little girl. And and believe it or not, it was uh, uh, Mal 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 Garcia's birthday. Yeah. Oh yeah, Who Mel was, Garcia. It was uh, Paul Rodriguez's is, is, is his homie. Dude, right? Yeah, yeah, that's his dude. It was his birthday, and Paul was there. Anyways, man, I jumped off stage, and the dudes just got off the chairs and then went out the side doors, and I went after him with the thing, and then like a bunch of comedians and people were following. <laughs> oh, wait, God. wait, come on, bro. That story gets around. You, you fucking, and it's like a comedian said, "Willie, you didn't burn bridges." He goes, "You blew them up," you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, that's one of. 
Many, bro. I remember chasing the 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 the, the club manager at a club called Go Bananas. Is in Cleveland or Connecticut? Do you remember? Did you play? No, I never played a club called Go Bananas. No, Cincinnati. 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 Oh. Yeah. Okay. I remember Go the manager bananas. told me. The manager gave me the light. I go, all right, bro. I see the light. And he goes, um, and then he gave me the light again. And then you know, you know how it was, man. The only guy that I heard that would take as many shots as me was you. I took a lot. On stage. Because I I, I would hear, I would get to a club and they would say, yeah, George was, man, he took like, he took like 12 shots, right? So I'd be like, fuck that, I'm going to take 13. You know? (laughs) (laughs) And you know what? I thought nobody, and here's the thing, you think nobody knows. Like, you think, oh, you get fucked up one night and you fucking make an ass to stay there you fucking all along and you throw up or some shit and you think, well, thank God nobody's going to know. They fucking told everybody. Yeah, Yeah. news travels fast. There was no no fucking secrets. So I remember that club, man, uh, I I asked the audience, you guys want me to leave? And they were like, no. And then I go, all right. I go, and then the, so the manager keeps giving me the light, bro. This is 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm gonna and, I, and I said, I said, bro, you give me the light one more time. I'm going to shove that up your ass and make you a glow worm, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 and, 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 uh, and sure enough, he came the five minutes again. Like, I threw the mic out and I started chasing him. I chased him into the kitchen. <laughs> we went in circles a little bit. I was, you know, I was pissed off, bro. And, uh, in, you know, and uh, well, I never got. To work a bunch of those clubs again, you know, that was like kind of the end of that. But but I, but, but, but uh, uh, you th- you threw a lot of chingasos up. Huh? A little bit, bro. What, what, where did the fighting gene come from? I'm being being abused, bro. I think my mom. Yeah. I think my mom yeah. hitting me like a like a like an animal. Um, uh, it's a, because you know, you know what? There's interesting things, man, about Willie. One that 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 I know is that he would try to help young comedians, like tell them. How to get better, how to be better, where they might have heard some stuff, and you know you need to do this and you need to do that. But also, like you didn't take any shit from. If there was guys that didn't take any shit, he didn't take any shit from anybody, mm-hmm. like nobody. No, but you, but I never, I didn't know about your upbringing, and you can see how, like somebody's just ready to go all the time. Like you know, you're just ready to go. Like you expect something not good to happen, and somebody's fucking with what you do, and you say, hey, listen, man, fucking relax, all right. Take this fucking thing off, fucking show up your ass. And he does, come and does it again. It's like a trigger, right? You just the trigger. It's a hair trigger. You go off, yeah. and you know. But but you know, bro, I, George, I tell you, I tell you guys, when I had kids, when I I, I said my whole thing was I didn't want them to, to grow up like I did. And you can tell you, my son's mm-hmm. favorite here. Hey, bro, I hugged you and I kissed you on the cheek many times, bro. Right, and you're in front of your yeah. friends. I didn't give a shit, you know. <laughs> ah, he said too he, he much. Said no, too bro, because that's, <laughs> that's cause big, I didn't, man. I didn't want that. Yeah. I didn't want it to continue, you know. Yeah. I didn't want that whole macho shit to continue, man. Because you know, looking back at, if I look back, if I could go back and talk to me, you know, I, I'd, I'd probably give myself a hug and say, "Calm the fuck down." You know, it wasn't your fault. You know, everything that happened to me, I was always, I had a like a chip on my shoulder. I was always, you know, like. You know. I don't know if it's a, you know, I think it's too easy to say it would be a chip. I think it's just fucking years of abuse and yeah. years of mistreatment and years of disrespect by your parents. I mean, your parents are the people that are supposed to take care of you. Yeah. They're supposed to know, wonder where you are. They're supposed to ask, are you all right? They're supposed to feed you. Yeah. They're supposed to keep you right. Not, you know, abuse you when you're in the one fucking place that you should feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. You're in your fucking house, man. If you're getting abused in your own house. You get in in the room that you watch fucking cartoons that you could see yourself getting fucking choked or thrown across the room or fucking slapped or hide under a chair so they can stop fucking hitting you with the belt. I mean that shit is awful for a kid, man. Well, it, yeah. it, it, for anybody, for a fucking dog, fucking anybody. Yeah, yeah. but especially sweet. when you're developing. Yeah. No, I remember, stuck in bro, and then we had a, a, a an uncle, my 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 uh, my mom's uh, uh, brother, stay with us. This motherfucker, bro. Talk about, okay, okay, this is gonna be my role model, right? He, <laughs> we, 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 I, I had, we had beds, and his bed had bugs. He had bugs, because, you know, Oof. he wouldn't shower or whatever, right? So we had bed bugs. <laughs> bro, I remember him waking me up like at eight o'clock, like, like at night, man. I was, I was about nine years old. He wakes me up and goes, hey, go to that bed. 
I go, why? He goes, just go to that bed. I want your bed. Ooh. So I go to his bed, bro. I wake up with like a thousand oh. fucking oh. guys. Oh. Oh, you motherfucker, bro. That's brutal. Yeah, bro, and bro. a fucking bed bug is like a little a fucking... A bro. Like a little fucking pinprick, and that motherfucker gets some blood. He starts... Oh! oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, bro. Man. But, I, but, I, but that, it, think about That's the kind of role model I have. You know, this uh, motherfucker. That's terrible. Yeah. And there, man. So fucking it, pulgas it, it, and shit. Fucking yeah. lice. Yeah, bro. Fuck, yeah. oh, man. I, I damn, did, bro. I, I didn't have that. The only thing I didn't have is I never heard my dad say I love you. Really? Yeah, I know he did. But it was a different, you know, upbringing. You know, what it, was that? Generation, and, and it was generation, generational, generational gap. Absolutely. He never. The day before he died, I said, and I had never said said it to him. Uh-huh. I grabbed him and I said, I cleared the room. He was in the hospital, and I said, Dad, I got to tell you something. And he said, What's that? I said, Dad, I love you. And he he put his hand on top of mine. And he said, Son, me too. But oh, he, he didn't say it. Yeah. He didn't say I love you. <laughs> he said, me too. So there is not a day when my kids grew up. I don't care if they got in trouble, if they yeah. got their ass with. Nope, there is not a day that if I'm there that they don't hear me say I love you. Yeah. Because I missed that from my dad. No. You know, <laughs> and, and and the next day, I told my sister, I just wish my dad would have said I love you. And then she came in about a half hour later. She says, you want to know what your dad did? You think he didn't love you? She said, look, in this metal box, I didn't have the bank account, in the metal box, yeah. there was the deed to the house, all the insurance papers, funeral arrangements. Every important document he had, and ten thousand dollars in there, just for my mom to get started. Even though my mom was working, she had income just for emergencies right now, and it was all wrapped up in a newspaper article about me, about when I was helping to start an orphanage in Vietnam. He says that's how important you are. So I knew he loved me. He had just never said it. So, you know, I was watching your, oh, I was watching his, his Netflix, and, yeah. and, and and I saw this tearful moment you had. You know, no, no, and I think, no, 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 I, I think, I st- the fuck <laughs> opens the door, and he goes to a door, and if it's open, he starts crying because he's happy it's open. <laughs> 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 hey. Hey bro, no, so, so beautiful. So I'm watching, I'm watching him. I thought we were gonna be locked. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I was watching your special, bro, and you're, and you're like, you started talking about your dad, and I'm, I'm watching it going, uh, I can't get sad, man. The fucker had a dad. <laughs> 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 I was like, you had a dad, you fucking son of a bitch. You know? <laughs> I don't have shit. I wish I had that it's story. It's hard not to have a dad. <laughs> It's hard not to have a dad. Yeah. All that fucking important thing, your fucking mom's there, <laughs> fucking lady, fucking best girl, suck my beer. I got, I think I got it. I'm all right. No, I want to walk in with you. Fucking don't walk in with me. Or at least don't scratch your pedals right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my grand, my mom is just fucking. Uh. <laughs> 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 yeah. She would be like this. She'd be like, we should walk in the room. And go, uh, she'd walk in the room. And go, what do you? Think? What are you guys watching? Fucking right here. It's not what we're watching, it's what we're smelling. Uh, I mean, just geez. nasty, man. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, have, but, yeah. no, but we don't, you don't have anything. So whatever fucking shit, dry skin, that, that uh, <laughs> fucking flying all over. <laughs> fucking little pedazos of the fucking papel flying through the air. I thought they were fucking confetti from a fucking coscoroa, the fucking uh, posadas and shit. <laughs> So, you know, you're poor, so you don't have any fucking class or any, you don't know, uh, you don't have any, like, coof. What is that? That motherfucker's uncoof. You know, they uh, fucking scratch uh, uh, You know, they catch you, fucking, they catch you with your finger in your own uh, uh, Hey, what are you going to do? Like, you fucking cock out your fucking uh, neck. Uh, like, God damn, man. Uh, what that shit. <laughs> Right? Uh, absolutely. They don't have if they don't if they don't have an education, they're not gonna have any fucking class. They're not gonna go. They're not gonna know what's right, and they're gonna be fucking. They're mean. They're fucking mean, man. They're mean to kids. Junkyard dogs. Yeah, I, that's, that's that's what I say, man. Like when you say like, why why would I uh, snap on people? And it's because you know the way we we grew up, man. You, you know, it's like that little Chihuahua. You, you fuck with him all the time. You fuck with him all in one day. He's gonna just fuck it. I'm in. You know, yeah. But then, and then also, bro, our business, our business of Hollywood, and then when we were coming in, there was they were like like we talked earlier. There's a lot of racism, man. I remember when I uh, auditioned for, uh, and I, I'm sure he's evolved as a human now, but uh, Jamie Masada, right at the Laugh Factory. I remember I had And some, he's a fucking immigrant from yeah, another yeah. fucking country. So I get off the stage. I had written these jokes. These, they were political jokes. 
and I get off the stage and uh, remember how uh, he, he gets comedians, he takes them upstairs and he gives them notes. You remember this? Yeah. It's like 92, 93. And so I get up there and I'm waiting for, these, these are Jamie's notes to me. He goes, hey, I heard your jokes. Uh, you shouldn't do that political stuff. You should, and this is exactly <laughs> what he said to me. You should talk about stealing hubcaps and things like that. You know, that's what he told me. That was that was his, uh, and I was like, Wee. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll take, I'll, you know, I'll take a note on that. I'll, 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 I'll. I left going, fuck that. I ain't gonna write about that. I was, I was writing, but this, you know, you, you, yeah, bro. I'm sure a lot of you, you gotta have thick skin, and I don't care at what level you're at to to be and stay in the game mm-hmm. in Hollywood, and and be a, a a Latino, and I know that. You know, blacks have their issues, but bro, they're, they just did a study, Netflix did a study about uh, cultures. Blacks are overrepresented 17% on Netflix. Over. And we're under. Yeah, we're under. We're under. And they're over. You know, like what you see on, on Netflix, that's, that's, that's like, you know, beyond what we where really you, have where, of black people. Where do you think, where do you, who, who's responsible for, um, uh, the oversaturation of of specials, like they used to call it a special, because yeah, it was a, it, was a it was special. <laughs> yeah. So if somebody was, I mean, it made sense. Somebody's going, "Hey, I'm shooting a Showtime special or an HBO special, Comedy Central special when it was special." And now, there, there's, I mean, everybody has one. They shouldn't even say special comedy uh, performance, whatever the fuck it is. Normal. I don't pay attention to them now because there are so many. Uh, when so it's many. a special, it's just another show. Right. But there's nothing special about it different than anybody else. So just when, because it says special now is not... When did that... When did... When did that's, I mean, that just, was, that's within the, just the last 15 years of, oh, of yeah. everybody getting one. That was Netflix. You that's couldn't like get... You couldn't fucking get one, right? No, no. I, yeah. If I, you got... It was hard to... I tried to get with... H, I tried to get... Well, I wasn't probably ready, but I tried to get an HBO special like in the mid-90s, yeah. late-90s, and then... Um, you know, my I think my show was on, and then I was watching somebody on HBO, and I said, wow, oh, this motherfucker got a special shit. <laughs> like, I'm going to fucking call over there. But I was already on TV. Not be- not before I was on TV, I didn't get one. Yeah. We, we didn't get, I didn't get anything. Yeah. I went to audition. I never got a part of the TV <laughs> show until I got my own show. I never got a fucking special before I got my, my own TV shows. The only thing I ever, I even auditioned for Murphy Brown as a comedian and fucking didn't get it. <laughs> Uh, what's his name? Got it, Bobby Collins. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, it's like it's just years of fucking no, yeah. years, mm-hmm. decades of fucking no. Arsenio, you know, well, Arsenio Jay Leno. Showed you, Arsenio showed you love, man. Show me a he, lot of love, man. You already on like we're fifteen still friends. times. Uh-huh. You were, yeah, man. We're still you friends. Know? Yeah. No, he's a good dude, man. Good dude. I, 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 I back in the day, I would run into him when he was working out sets at yep. the Ice House. Well, he's a good dude. And uh, uh, um, what the fuck is that? You hear that yelling? Kids. Kids. Yeah, there's kids, there's, 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 there's kids oh. out there. Um, with the with the way that you work, right? You're you're very meticulous about how you prepare. Well, we both were. That's we one thing. Were, that's yeah. one thing. That's one, that's one of the uh, the connecting threads with you and I had was because you would do a set or I would do a set, and I remember one time sitting with you at the Laugh Factory, I don't know if you remember, man, and we were talking about writing and we were talking about the process and you kind of have that same old school, hey, you write a joke, you try it out, if it doesn't, you change it, or, yep. you know, and a lot of the guys didn't have that work ethic, mm-hmm. you know, because it takes time, man, it takes, yep. like I tell people, to be a, to be a, to do, to be a comedian, you gotta be willing to be by yourself, which is a hard thing, and most people, you know, like it's like playing a sport. People just want to show up on game day and put on the uniform. But what were you when you were supposed to be practicing? Nobody yeah. watching you. You know, writing and and that that the comedy, the joke comes from the preparation where nobody's cheering you on, and and you're by you got to be willing to be by yourself. And the, here's the thing, like you said, it, the people that are have trauma in their lives. A lot of times it's hard for us to be by ourselves, you know, but you have to fight through that. It's, 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 I, I, I read this book by uh, Stephen King, 
and it was, I think it's called How to Write or something. And he, he talked about oh, on writing. Yeah, Stephen yeah, King, right. Fantastic Isn't book. Isn't that a great yeah, book? Yeah, that's incredible. And he, gave, he gave a lot of his nuggets, like like oh, gold yeah. nuggets on yeah, writing. Yeah, yeah. Remember? He, Wait a minute, that motherfucker was writing all about people monstros and shit. He wrote a book, <laughs> book about writing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But well, he gave away. How about how good was that word monstros? That's a fucking <laughs> good that's word. A, that's a one I've never heard. Fucking <laughs> monstros. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, no, but you know, it uh, it takes discipline. But well, how did you find that book? Um, because some, you know what? Uh, uh, somebody told me they, because uh, I told you you're going to be on the podcast, and they told me they saw you carrying a Stephen King book. Uh, and I said, well, why would fucking Willie be carrying a Stephen, <laughs> Stephen King book? And it was the book about writing. I'm sure about writing. now it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. No, I I always wanted to get a, a little little knowledge from 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 everyone, and you know, like as far as like their how they created something, right? you know, and it, and it comes down, and you know, anybody at any art, you know, right, what you did as, as a cop, man, you didn't just go in there, you, man, you, you, you know, you, uh, you got people's experience. Sure. They shared knowledge with you. Exactly. And then you created your own persona, right? Exactly. But, but it came from people sharing knowledge. So the way I did is, you know, uh, I, I, w- I would see how people would go about their process. Right. And, and then see if I can how much of that I can have for myself. Mm-hmm. And, and I always wanted to be. That's right. And, you know, and, and I think this was important to you as it was to me, um, was to be respected as a comedian. Because there are a lot of comedians that get no respect are like, oh, look at this fucking guy. Right. I, That's oh, right. This guy, yeah. like, oh, man, you know. And me, I just I wanted people to say, fuck, that's a funny bit. Right. That's man, right. where'd he come up with that bit? Right. You know, like the way we remember uh, 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 Pryor's bits and Carlin's bits yeah. about... Carlin's bit about stuff is like fucking genius. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 you know, I always wanted to be that guy where people could, could go, man. And, and one of the things. And you can only be that guy if you put your fucking hours. In, like, you know, oh, yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you're a boxer and you're going to fight a year from now. You're gonna you're gonna be away from sex. You're gonna be away yeah. from alcohol. You're gonna be able to smoke. You're gonna be by yourself. You're gonna run in the morning. And if you don't, you know who's gonna know? You're gonna know first, yeah. and then everybody's gonna fucking know yeah. because you're gonna get knocked out, or in the sixth round you're gonna hit a wall, and you gotta know that you're gonna hit a wall like boxers. But then if you make it, you get that second. You see those dudes come to come back and get a second win, but. If you don't prepare, you 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 can't you, you're not gonna sustain. You can't fucking do anything. Yeah, even yeah. even even if you got to the place where somebody said, "Hey man, they, there's a thousand people in there. They're ready to go." And then you walk up there, and you know that you're not ready. Instead, of say, "No, dude, I'm I'm cool. I'm I'm gonna go up there." And you go up there, but you're not you're not connected to your own shit. You're not ready for the thousand people, and you go down. So it's no, it's well, preparing uh, over and over and over oh, yeah. and over for five minutes. Yeah. I have a question for the both of you. Yeah. You know, when you do this stuff, you write you write your stuff, and you're by yourself. At what point in time do you write a joke, get it down, or maybe a couple of jokes, and then present it to somebody else, not the stage, but just somebody else? Nobody. You don't. No. You don't, no. you don't, you don't. Yeah. That, you to don't. me, the audience tells you whether the joke's good or not. Because yeah. if I show Grant, I was like, "What is it about this? What's that?" That's a joke I wrote. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't know. I don't <laughs> yeah. know, dude. Why would he say that? Uh, yeah, like, so yeah. now you're in your head, you got doubt. But let's show somebody who doesn't know you and some crowd, and then yeah. you, know, you gotcha. see it work. For me, gotcha. it, for me, it's a, it's a process, and I don't know. I can't write funny. Like, I can't sit down and go, okay, I'm going to write a funny bit about my son, right? I can't. I got to write first the story that I'm thinking about, mm-hmm. yeah. like a story of like, you know, when uh, maybe you wrecked a car and, and I just write the story first without like, fuck the funny. There's no funny in there. It's just a story now. And then I kind of stay away from it and then I read it again. Mm-hmm. And now I make change, you, you embellish, you, you exaggerate, you know, you, that makes you, a lot you, of sense. you, you lie, you, 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 you know what I mean? I, there's a joke I have about, you know, my mom putting a cross over my, my, uh, my bed. And the cross in real life that she put over my bed was only like six, seven inches, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it didn't even have a Jesus. It was just, but in the joke, the cross is yeah. at four feet and, and Jesus is, 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 and she plugs it in, Jesus moves around. That never happened. But what it was, you know, you exaggerate. Once you yeah. do your writing, that's mm-hmm. when you, you, your, your exaggeration comes in. So that's, that's my process. I know yeah. we all have, I know you. Uh, kind of the same. Yeah. I yeah. never heard anybody say uh, that, any comedians that I've known. 
Um, I heard years ago that Jerry Seinfeld used to write for an hour a day, but it didn't have to be funny. He just wrote. Like you sit there and for an hour and you're like, I can't do it. But you start writing for two minutes yeah. and then you go to five minutes. It's like, it's like if you were a runner. Then you go to 10 minutes and then all of a sudden it starts to become easier. And even though, like Willie said, it doesn't make sense at that time, you're just training yourself to think about situations and think about topics and think about things. But you're sitting down and you are disciplining yourself enough to sit for a fucking hour. After that, when you get to an hour, get it, then you can get up and go. <coughs> you know, I told Mayan years ago, just write for two minutes yeah. and then leave it alone. And then try to write for three minutes, then write for five and leave it alone. Yeah. And then before you know it, you can sit down for 15 minutes. You wouldn't even know you'd be right for half an hour. Yeah. No, I, I took this from Seinfeld, and I'm sure you've heard it too. You guys have heard it, where they asked him one time why he wrote eight hours a day. They asked him, and he said, well, one time I'm walking around. I was, I guess he's walking around New York, and he goes, hey, a policeman works eight hours. He goes, construction guy is working eight hours. This lady's here for eight hours. And that's where I started going, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I got to put in the, uh, you know, the, this it's amount true. of time in the craft. Yeah. But the, the only thing for me, man, was uh, was that was the networking part, you know, as, as coming up, man. I, I, I go back in time and tell But that's what really almost, it became more important, it became almost, I won't say, I won't say as important, but fuck, man, it just became, and if you're not a fucking networker, yeah. or you're not somebody that's gonna speak up, it's tough, it, you, yeah. you put yourself in a tough position. But I'll tell you, here's yeah. another thing, man, which I, I, I gotta, it, it, I feel like it's important, especially because you're here, bro, my son, is actually, I, I love being a comedian. I mean, there's nothing else that g gave me that high, right? That gives you that high. You know, right. bro, that yeah. rush you get when you do a set and you fucking kill and you fucking... To me, uh, uh, him and, my, and, and my, my boys, I was their coach for... Uh, we start. I started the first travel team, right? And 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 Northeast LA Little League. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was yeah. it was the first time that I had told these guys from they're all from Frog Town. All the kids. I didn't pick kids like like you would pick kids, you know. I, I, they were all from one neighborhood. They were all your homies, right? Yeah. They were all from Frog Town, Echo Park, Silver Lake. All the Northeast kids, and I would get and. And For I people that don't know, explain where Frogtown is because uh, 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 it's Elysian, Elysian Valley, Elysian Park. Is it called? Is that over there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, let's, let's go over here. The fucking Elysian Thomas Park, Bay. right? That, that, the Elysian Park. Yeah, Elysian that's, Park. Where it's, that's where it's at. I, I don't know. I, I call it. I don't know by its gang name. Right? I don't that's even know by it. Elysian Park. Uh, yeah. Well, Frogtown. That's an. E, that's a city gang. I work the but, county side. One time I went to. Uh, uh, um, a compadres on Sunset after a Dodger game, and there was some cholo out there with no T-shirt on. He had EP on his stomach. I go, what's that for? I thought I was Presley, and he's like, fuck. Oh, shit. I said, what's that? Elvis Presley, oh. fuck, hey, fuck you. Hey. <laughs> fuck, he came back in. Hey, sorry, man. I don't know who you were. The fuck doesn't yeah. matter what you fucking told me to go fuck myself, man. <laughs> no, but I, but I tell Compadre you, Compadre is great, though. Compadre is good, yeah. You know, I... I I drank. I used to drink it uh, with Kenny Landro back in the day. Oh, when, when Kenny, yeah, yeah. Kenny, Kenny, like he doesn't drink anymore, but he hasn't drank for ten years. But this is back in the day when he would. He, when he was and, a Dodger, he'd stop in there. He, no, no, he would go to my house. Oh, no, he'd oh, come my house. Him and, and Bobo. Remember Bobo? Oh yeah, yeah. Bobo Castillo. Yeah, Bobo from Lincoln Heights. Taught uh, Fernando the Screwball. Yeah, taught. Yeah. So those guys, man, I I was able because you know being comedians, we we it was people that that start digging us and, and right. we getting the vibes. And I was always a Dodger fan. I was. And uh, they they would share information with me when these guys are little, and they would tell me, Willie, man, when you because we started playing Orange County, right? All these little brown kids, we play Orange County. We we play. My friend says, Willie, if you uh, if you want your kids to to excel, you got to put them in their in their in their toughest uh, uh, mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. And by the way, his son. Uh, and, 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 and he walked the walk, and, you know, because his son was, uh, they, you know, Kansas just won the, the NCAA uh, championship. Uh, the and, his, uh, and, and, and basketball, the, the Oh, yeah, right, right, right. All right. The, the, uh, oh, his son was a point guard, uh, Remy, Remy Martin was... Uh, his name was Remy Martin? Yeah, the kid's Remy, yeah, the kid's name is Remy. Yeah, well, anyway, this... this Good cognac. 
Yeah, so so I, I took these guys to Orange. I remember the first time I used to take you guys to Orange County, mijo, and we'd, we would get beat up by, by fucking football scores, right? 27 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> right? We're, 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 we're like, you got a safety at least. No, it was like, you know, <laughs> yeah, 37 to 2 down. and shit. And, but I, and, and then uh, all the cats that I, that, uh, that I, you know, it's like comedy. Right. I always wanted to, you know, study the guys that were really good. You know, you know uh, the guys. You know, I'm. St- you know, we always had guys uh, that, yeah, that, sure. that didn't leave. That didn't leave the neighborhood as far as comedians. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. They sure. only played between Pomona, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, anyways, uh, I never asked those guys for shit. You know, I asked. I asked the guys who were uh, back in the day. It was uh, uh, Dom Herrera. Right. When I was a young comic, oh, yeah. I, w- I would ask Dom Herrera for help, like pick his brain. He was right. a good dude. And the same thing I did with with with, uh, with baseball. I would ask the guys who played pro ball, man. Right. You know, I'm not gonna ask you know the, the, the drunk coach from down the street. So he would say it's important that they look good. It, it's important that when they walk in somewhere, that they feel they belong. Right. And so man, and when he put that in my head, like, oh, it makes sense. Even if we get beat up, we're gonna look good. So <laughs> I remember, bro. Remember you guys had jackets, uh, yeah, like, beanies. You guys had your names on your on, on their on, on their, their bags. On their bags. Yeah. You guys had your last names and your number, Shit. bro. That's badass. And jackets and everybody matching cleats, bro. Everybody. They, we would walk in there, bro. When 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 our team would walk in, with respect, you know. And little by little, we ended up beating Chatsworth, bro. Right? Were you? No, Chatsworth, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we when travel ball. So, uh, but but it so so so, yeah. So you want to get respect? You look. You have to look the part. Yeah. And yeah. then if you take enough fucking beatings, right? You're tired <laughs> of fucking taking beatings. You're like fuck it. You 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 fight back. So when I was a little league coach. Uh, San Fernando, right? In in San Fernando, they're like Santa Rosa League. I had these two brothers, and the one brother was good, and then the other brother, Hector, looked like a little fucking uh, uh, ninja turtle, like a big chest. <laughs> he was a little kid. He was the one that you you didn't let play. So of course, there's there's a, a um, Ty runner on third, and then the little turtles up. He's got the fucking thing, <laughs> yeah. and he's like you know the great gazoo fucking helmet, big ass helmet. You can't you can't even see him in the back. Of the, thing, the fucking visors all the way back here. So I go, and he was little, and I go, hey, come over here. Put my fucking hand. You know how the coach would put yeah. his hands on your shoulders yeah, yeah. so that you would listen? Yeah. He puts it right here. He's like, listen. I look at him. I go, Hector, don't swing. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Don't swing. Whatever you do. And you know you ruined that kid's for life, right? You know, whatever. You know, every, every, every big decision, fucking he doesn't make it. He goes, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I said, go, I said, you, I said you, you hear me? I, I got to He called me coach. You got I got a coach. <laughs> Don't swing. Fucker goes back there. He's like, this fucker swings at the first one. (laughs) I said, Hector, don't swing. Takes a ball, one and one. He looks happy. He's all happy. He's like, he's like, (laughs) fucker throw another one. Swings again. (laughs) Throws another one. Ball. Two, two. Throws another one. Ball. Three, two. I said, oh, this motherfucker. Fouls it off. I'm like, don't swing. Fucking fouls and all. I said, this fucking kid's going to kill me, man. I said, don't swing. He swings. He fucking nubs it maybe three feet in front of home plate. Swinging bunt. He's a swinging bunt. <laughs> and he takes off running, but he's like a fucking little turtle. Like a fucking little. So he's yeah. running, and it looks like he's going to take him forever. And the pitcher comes around, the catcher comes around, picks it up, throws it. And pulls the first baseman off his back foot. His foot comes yeah, out yeah. the base. And fucking Hector, of course, like he didn't slide. He kind of fell, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like a domino. He just fucking fell, foul head first, and he was safe. And that guy scored, and we won. And when he turned around to look at us, he had dirt on the visor of the helmet because he hit head first. <laughs> <laughs> he had fucking dirt. And <laughs> like, what happened? And we picked him up and we carried him around. I, I'm, I, I probably was never been. Happier, that happier. Like we, I mean, just fucking amazing, man. Like you know, baseball, yeah, yeah, did, baseball did that. Yeah. That this little kid had a hero yeah. moment after I told him, "Don't fucking yeah. swing." Yeah. You know, and it was uh, quite special, man. Well, no, you know what? Two brothers now are in there saying, "See, Holmes, I told you, you shouldn't have swung." Fucking him. Hector, right? <laughs> fucking Hector, man. They're all talking about you, brother. After they're like, "Bro, don't listen to him, bro. I don't listen to him." I know. Don't <laughs> swing. Do a swing. <laughs> but I mean, that's you know, I love, I love baseball. Baseball is. Uh, 
I you think play, maybe you more played than, at San Fernando, right? I played at San Fernando High. Yeah. What, what was your position? I, I uh, let's see. I was a third baseman. Uh, uh, played the hot uh, corner. Uh, you yep. can handle the hot corner. Yeah, I played third baseman. Oh shit! And then that's not that's a no. That's I a pitch. Ball, that, that next that's, to catcher is a ball, the ballsiest fucking position, bro. We get missiles fucking. That's what, yeah. That you. was a fucking pretty tough one. That's a third baseman in college right there. Yeah, dude. Right, you fucking. But you know how I, tr you know how I got them, uh, good at fucking not getting out the way. I'd hit them tennis balls from like 15, 20 feet away, right, right, all right. Yeah, but, but. Okay, I, all right, I learned. All right, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> what you hit them over your head? No, no. Okay. He didn't start doing that until I was like. All right, come here, come here real quick. Come here, come here real quick, bro. Tell, tell, tell. tell. But hey, bro. If you need a mic, you can. Sorry, no, you can. Ch ch uh, children's services can't get me for this, right? <laughs> No, what, what, we'll tell, tell him the how yeah. would I how would I hit? Yeah, yeah. he would he would uh okay he could he like when I was like five. But could but could he handle the bat like he could throw it and hit? Bro, he would he could hit it harder like twice as hard as he as he could hit a baseball right now, like that. <laughs> oh shit! But it wasn't until I got to like high school is when he started using tennis balls. But like too fucking late. All right, all right. Fucking legs, the legs, hey, but you, but you know what? But I evolved. I yeah. evolved because because I, I was gonna kill them, you know. <laughs> I was gonna, you know, and uh, but I, I would get tennis balls. Oh, you're a dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when I went in tenth grade, after all the uh, all the practice in the summer and the beginning of the school, you know, and then fucking New Year, we have your practice. So I had a I had a bruise in the in, right here in, my, in this hand, right here, the glove hand. So the back of my hand was was purple back here from the bruise. And if I if I went like that, it 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 would hurt to the touch, right? Talking uh, about mm -hmm. Sure. So I went to the I went to the coach, uh, and he was sitting at the desk, and I, he goes, "What can I do for you guys?" I said, "Hey, man, my hand is I don't know if I can be, be able to play, man. My hand's all fucked up." He saw that it was purple. He goes, "Oh yeah, let me look at that. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yeah." He leans down, brings out a piece of foam that's just a, a different, like it's just an odd angle. You know, it's an odd right, size. Right. He gets a scissors. And he cuts a fucking circle, and he puts it right here. He goes, here you go. I see you out there at <laughs> fucking 230. He, he, he just cut a pad to put in my glove. Ruthless. And yeah. was like, no, you're not. And they, and they sell those now. No, they, they make the, they, they, they make them for the inside. Yeah. Out. I'm just curious. Did you, list, did you listen to your dad follows instructions as a coach? Or did you believe in it, or would That's you believe the other coach? <laughs> tell the truth. No, of course you would tell the truth. Yeah, I mean... Where was he? Get here. Come over here. Come come over. Over. And then I'll give you the yeah. reason go I asked. Go up by, by Gil over there. Then I'll said. give you the reason I asked you the question. What's... Now, did you believe, if your dad said, do it this way, do it that way, or do this, do that, did you follow his instructions? Or if you had a second well, coach? So You're talking did, to Mike. No, what he did is uh, he got us uh, uh, like professional coaching when we were like seven. So he kind of like stepped out of the way for and let some other guy coach us. But when he would coach us, like, no, nah, I wouldn't listen. Uh, <laughs> and, bro, and, we, and we, we would win, bro. And the, the, reason, the reason I asked that, I asked you if you knew Clem Bonilla. Uh -huh. Clem Bonilla is a retired homicide cop, good friend of mine. He was coaching a team that was, he would just put the team together for the, uh, these guys that go uh, looking for pros, you know, right. yeah, scouts. Yeah, scouts. scouts. Yeah. They, they had a tournament back in the Midwest someplace, and he'd take a team over there for the scouts. One of the guys on his team was Steve Garvey's son. Oh, he had a lot of them, bro. Yeah, he, well, he had, he had <laughs> this, one that was playing first base. Did, Steve and and he told he told a kid, he says, Gil, he says, you wouldn't believe it. People just don't listen to their dads. He says, I got this first base right now. He says, hey, didn't your dad teach you anything? Didn't your dad tell you? He says, yeah, but that's just my dad. And it was Steve Garvey's son <laughs> who never listened to his dad. Yeah. So that's why yeah, I asked, you know, did you, know, you follow what your dad said? Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. I used to pay these guys $100 an hour, like his, his, his fielding coach, his batting coach. They're different guys, man. And then, and then, and then they had their travel uh, teams. And it would piss me off, man, because they would be telling them stuff. And then I would drive home with them and go, hey. And they're like, hey, Dad, you see how he said that? I go, motherfucker, I've been telling you that for fucking years. Mm -hmm. But because I say it. Exactly. You know what I mean? That was but, my but point. But somebody else says it, they're like, oh, man, that's deep shit. You know, that's, <laughs> exactly. that's about baseball. But also, but but also like, what, what is it about him that, that he would pay somebody? Like, he's very, what is that? What's the word? Like, he's diligent, right. but he's oh, also sure. very connected to what he knows He just is wants right the best for his son. For, yeah. But he wants the best for... Like he read that book. Nobody like reads that Stephen King book, you know, <laughs> but, uh, especially Chicano. But he, he was he put together shows and bars. 
He tried to help guys. I mean, there's, there's, uh. there's, what is the, the personality is like somebody of, like an organizer, right? You think? Well, well, yeah, I think for me, I, like a good it's not somebody that, it's yeah, like, I'm, I was solitary. I didn't fucking want to help anybody. I fucking was work with, like a boxer. You ain't gonna fucking say, I'll be fighting you in two years. Let's hang out together. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I stayed away from everybody. Right? No, no you did. You did, bro. Yeah, you yeah. did. Nobody got but, to but, know uh, me, uh, and, but, and I didn't did, talk to anybody. Okay, going back now, going back on your career, obviously you've had an amazing career, bro. But going back now, uh, how I said earlier, how we can go back to and see ourselves. Would you go back and would you have done anything different with with like like how Paul had that moment? Paul had that moment of like, like you call it clarity. Where like, man, we should have been more uh, of a group with you guys. That's exactly his words, bro. He says, "Me and George, we should all have been more of a group." What do you? What do you? No, no. You, you keep it the way it is. No. I yeah, I would have. If you would have changed it, anything, he wouldn't have called me up. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, he, he, he didn't set an example for me. I see. That's bro. So I, I never told him that. But I never else. told him that. But you know, obviously, you know, it's a, we, we, we were a, talk about comedy is already it was a small new, community. It was new to us. Comedy is already a small community. Now you get the Latino community. It was tiny. Yeah. So anything that happened to anybody, we all, everybody fucking right. knew. You know, like. Like you going on Arsenio, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, Paul being on a million to one, That's that right. movie, those things are big to us, you know? And, uh, and I always thought the reason you were more of a, a, of a guy that would unite, unite everybody or was because of some things that I heard how Paul, when you were coming up and he was already headlining, right? right. He was already Paul and you were, you, you were, you were coming up behind him. Am I right? Yes. And he didn't show you. The welcome mat, like, look, George, man. Uh, uh, let me let, let me, me let me take you in, <clears throat> and, and, and let me and, and let me show you some things about the craft, about about just the business in itself. He he never he never. Let me tell you. Himself, I'm going to tell you something right now, that nobody knows, about our relationship. Okay. In the summer of 1979, he was already starting to get pretty good, so he told me. Stand off to the side of the stage, and when I call you, come up. Okay. Where is it? Where is this? At, at the comedy store in Westwood. Oh, okay, okay. So he goes up there. I'm up there, and he has a jacket on, and he and he says, "Come on up here." And I walk up there, and he gives me his jacket like I was a fucking ballet. And right. I walk off with the fucking jacket because I'm 18. What the fuck? Right, right, right. But it's fucking embarrassing. Right. right. But you thought you were gonna do stand up. I thought we would have, I don't know what it was. I had no idea what it was. But it, you didn't think it was going to be that. I didn't think it was like, going to yeah. pull, pull me up well, there I, to listen, give me a fucking jacket. I, I've heard some stories of stuff that, that obviously, you know, that it's only within the c comedy uh, community, bro. So I, I, had, I, 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 no, I had kind of put it together why you were the way you were. It was kind of like, okay, they didn't set the tone for you. So you were like, well, all right, fuck it. This is the way it is. And I grew up kind of by myself anyways. And then in, in the, you know, 1980, you know, I was already doing 79, but I wasn't around as much as, like, Paul was. So Paul was in the early 80s, like 83, 84. He was at the Ice House, and I show up on a Sunday. I think he's there on a Sunday. Yeah. And he sees me while he's going into the green room, and he said, I thought you died. So that's fucking two. I said, oh, motherfucker, that's two. Oh, that's that comedian who died. Remember? The no, one that, 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 but he, he said it as an insult. I thought you died. Oh. Oh, when you got off stage? No, when I he, he hadn't seen me in a few years. Oh, so yeah, I'm on a Sunday hanging out by the fireplace, right? Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. He's yeah. like, "Hey, I thought you died." Like his, that was his fucking joke. Oh, so I was like, "Oh, okay, motherfucker." Oh, so there I was died. no, there was no. You know, I, 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 I never. Died, puto. Uh, <laughs> I really didn't. Nothing personal. I don't know the guy. I, the only time I had seen Paul was on television stuff. I hadn't seen him on anything else, and I really didn't care for. I didn't think he was that funny. And then I went and I saw him do stand-up one night and I thought he was much funnier in stand-up than he was on television I saw him one time I've never bothered to see him again well he didn't do I mean not to disparage but he didn't do a lot it, not, a, not a lot of I mean he never had multiple TV shows he had one that wasn't on that long but he did some films and stuff yeah. and he had you know some specials and stuff but you know he's been around a long time he's been around 40 yeah. years I mean yeah, I've been around 40 years yeah but you know, I I don't know that, that's why I had that question for you. But man. I think yeah, I th and I think I think that that that's that's true, 
Uh, but my personality was more of a singular dude. Like I yeah. wasn't a friendly guy. Yeah, no, bro. I like I said, I, I remember the the times I that a friend. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't remember the times that we talked. I remember one time you and I were at the Laugh Factory when we were upstairs and we were watching uh, Jeff Garcia, and and uh, you go, "Hey Willie, isn't that your joke?" You told me like that. I go, "I don't want to talk. I'll talk to him later." But you mm-hmm. you you were, you did have that stickler like. Uh, have respect for the craft kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of cats. And so did you. Man. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's a passion and it's it's the respect that that you want to have in any career. I guess whatever you do, if you want to, if you fucking build, you know, your construction guy, you want his people to go, yeah, that's his wall, man. That's right. Well, you know, that's the, or whatever, right? Right. Yeah. right. Um, but yeah, you know, if you if you were, what did this I always ask me? What would have been your aside from comedy? What would have been your dream job? Like dream. a gig that you would do. If I could get not paid. For free, not, 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 oh, yeah. I want to be a fucking astronaut. But no, some no, shit no, that, no. A dirty you know. cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to be fucking chupando. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, he would you know be what? dirty from the inside. <laughs> I'm going to follow his pants. I would, I would have been, I would have been a dirty cop. I think I would have. I'm pretty sure. No, you're, 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 you're pretty right on that one. <laughs> you could have been shady. Yeah. No, man. Um, Because I think about that situation. No, but my dream job, bro, would have been to coach, uh, coach baseball at like maybe the high school level. Oh wow. That that would have been awesome. I mean because you learn so much about the game. You learn how mental the game is. Like there's a book called The Mental Game of Baseball written by this guy named Dorfman. I think his last name's Dorf oh, Dorfman. Check it, out. check it out. And that guy was Scott Boris, you know Scott yep, Boris is the biggest agent, biggest agent. in baseball uh, uh, and and that was his that guy would uh would 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 um I don't know, be a therapist for his... Right. He always had the 30 biggest picks. Uh, Harvey players. Dorfman, by the way. Harvey Dorfman. Harvey Dorfman, yeah. And he wrote... that. That's a great book, man. And when I started learning about the psychology, man, and and how I connected to life, it actually helped me in life. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember, my, I remember this, bro, and I, I don't know if we ever talked about it, but he had a really shitty... Uh, they had taken him out. He was playing Juco, playing junior college and Ventura, and he had a bad games back to back to back right and the coaches took him out and it was it was really a bad situation because it was a second year of, of junior college mm-hmm, and if mm-hmm. you don't put up good numbers just, you're not going to get that ride that you want for the four year college sure. mm-hmm. so for him to be sitting the pine and i remember reading that book uh, uh about uh, about the psychology of baseball ba- yeah. basically the psychology of baseball yeah. and back in the day he would have gotten the car and uh and i would have said something because oh they gave you that bat Remember, he gave you that bat, and you did something wrong, and he yelled at you, and he said something like, the fuck, Fabian? Yeah, yeah that was the day I was there. <laughs> that was the day I was there. And I remember they saying uh, not to, uh, uh, if you're going to have, you're going to help your kid out, don't bring it up. Don't bring up the heirs. Right. Don't talk, unless he wants to. Right. So I remember that that, uh, that I I didn't I said don't say anything don't bring it up don't say shit because they brought him up in a in a, in a, it, a critical position yeah it it's a, a, and it's hard not it's hard not yeah, to yeah so he gets in the car uh, he gets in the car and all I said was like hey bro your favorite food oh, what is it man I was like I knew what it was but I wanted him yep. to say he goes yeah. oh sushi oh yeah hey dude let's go grab some sushi you gotta go so we went mm-hmm. we had sushi we had a couple beers. Bro, we never talked about the game. I think he said something, and I let you say something, and I was just listening. Yeah, and then went to a Barnes and Noble, and then I got this book. You did? Yeah. And then the season like just changed. Like, what book was it, bro? Oh, Do you remember? <laughs> Same thing with Barnes what, and Noble. But check, check this out. He uh, he got another at bat like two games later. You hit a double, and then you hit doubles and doubles and singles, and then you're back in the lineup. And then you got that ride to San Francisco, right? Yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah, but it was but that day that when he was shitting Down, the bed, yeah. when he was really fucking up, is don't bring it up. Yeah, don't bring yeah. it because they say it's a, a thing they say. Uh, and to the dads out there that have their kids in school, they say it's a, a psychological choke. Like you're actually choking them psychological because the players already know they're fucking up. You know, the the other team knows, the coach knows they're fucking right. up. Right. And so they, 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 so now you get in the car with them and you get in this car where it's, mm-hmm. it's a little compartment and now um, you're doing extra choking, you know? Like yeah. now they got nowhere to go mentally to oh, release wow. that shit. So it was just like, we, we, we wouldn't talk about nothing but 
but sushi, man. That's all we uh, The mean. book was probably how to get your dad to take you to sushi. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, funny Beneath what the, the fucking <laughs> king of comedy. No, but but uh, <laughs> but you see that that in in those books, like I I guess you look at books to to look at. Uh, it was my only education. It was my only education, George. Uh, you know, it my only education. Though, right? when, yeah, it, was, because with, with with my daughter, with my with uh, mine, you know, when we were at the we were doing the taping, she had a. A line where she didn't finish the line and she paused, and I said it over her line because I'll go like, yeah, right. you can't, we can't be leaving. Right. And she's and they come back. He goes, oh, she had a line there. Her coach said, I said, hey, well, she's got to, she's got to pick it up, man. Like, I'm not gonna wait around for her to whatever she felt right. is a is a decent enough pause because she's a little bit haven't been doing it as long. She doesn't know that you could, you know, you can go ahead and you don't have to pause. An unnatural conversation. So I, I jumped in there a couple of times, and I said, "Hey, you know, pick it up, pick it up. You're, yeah. you're pick coaching, it, pick it up. Yeah, so pick it yeah. up. <laughs> like get to it. Yeah. I, I, so you're you're you, you got two girls? Only have one. Yeah, one girl. Okay, man. Two personalities though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's cool. But I mean, listen, man. I mean, I mean, to start out doing comedy and wanting to be a comedian my whole life. And then have and being an only child, and then having everybody, one I, child. Everybody that, I was talking about you being an only child, bro. That they say, hey, the reason George is, a, is like that because he's the only <laughs> fucking never shared his toys. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I fucking never knowing how to share his fucking toys. <laughs> That's so, true. So, I so I, I always thought that was one of the reasons that you were. To me, I think it's a big. Role. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that having that personality of being singular and away from everybody is the best way to approach fucking life. I, you, you, you know. Because your relationships are very, you know, we we come in and out. So, you know, we're there for a week, then we leave to another place. And then if you grow if you grow up, and people are you know leave you, it's the perfect fucking job for somebody who's used to being left. Yeah. You, you leave, you know. Yeah. So in relationships, you would say, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave before you leave. Right. And then it doesn't serve you as a person. Well, it serves you in this business because if you're nervous. You're so used to having bad shit happen, you block it out. It's not gonna, gonna yeah. you're not gonna crumble because you're so nervous. No, you know? for 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 me and for young comics out there, and, and and I'll give this advice to young comics out there that work the road, because you know, man, anybody that works the road, and I don't care how tough you say you want to act, it's lonely, bro. Because you get on the airplane, you go by, you go by yourself, you, you go to that hotel or that or or by yourself, and then you get to the show and there's people that like you, people that recognize you. The show's over. Now you're by yourself again. And, 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 We're and, fucking and, 22 and, hours. And, and every, every, like, you know, and then the next, like you said, the next week, another city. And, mm. and, and me, obviously, I found uh, an answer drinking, right? I would drink I, I, more than the average right. guy to get through it for me, you know? And then, as I got older and I, I start, and I, I felt like, you know, ho hopefully a little wiser, I started thinking, wait a minute, my life, my life is not the norm, you know? I don't have a regular family, mm -hmm. regular friends. I said, that guy I'm gonna visit, uh, you know, in Texas this week, th that guy, even though I see him once a year, that guy is actually yeah. like family to me. That's, but I just don't have a regular, Mm -hmm. We don't have a regular uh, 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 type of uh, relationships. So I made those guys. I opened up myself where I go, wait a minute, that's my friend. That's, I'm going to see, even though I'm only here for a week. So that's how I coped with it. Right. Bro. And I'm, I'm sure you had, your, your, your way was to just say, fuck it, right? I don't yeah. want to, I'm going to get close to people. Uh, and because and, 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 I would run into people that would be hurt. Because you wouldn't call them the next time you went to that city. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I would right. meet guys, and they're like, man, we, were, we went to go eat, went to go drink, and fucking, he didn't even return my calls. I'm like, ah, bro, you know, not, and yeah, it was your was. way. It was your way. Yeah, that's Everybody copes, right? Everybody copes their own, yeah. my, my way. And I did that for a long time until I said, all right, fuck, I, you know, uh, let me find a, a, different, a different way. To, to to make this work for me, the road. Yeah. Are you so, still out there, right? Yeah, bro. I'm still, yeah. I'm still, and, and, and how is it different now? For me, uh, I don't know. But you more, still I, drink or you don't drink I anymore? Still, yeah, absolutely yeah. I drink, bro. Yeah. Um, no, I... I uh, I enjoy it more now. As we get older, we get yeah. wiser, right? Yeah, yeah. When you're when you're when you're you're a young comic, you're just you're you're a fucking crazy cowboy, man. You know what I mean? You're you're fucking a, you're out there just 
fucking wild as wild right. can be, man. And drinks are free. <laughs> drinks are free. Yeah, we has come out of everywhere. So the waitresses, and, 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 it's almost <laughs> like if you were a lion and the waitresses were like little, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. gazelles. Yeah, gazelles. Yeah. 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 Oh, which one? Yeah. Which one this week? Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. You know how bad you know how bad I was in 1991. I went to work before I did the Tonight Show. I went to work in Atlantic City in the in a club, and uh, and and the, this waitress came over the first night, and she goes, "I just want to let you know, I suck everybody's dick at the end of the week, all the headliners." <laughs> I said, "Oh, okay. I'll see you Sunday then." <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Uh, I was so bad, she left before she sucked. <laughs> 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 I swear to God, say, hey, where's that girl? Oh, she no. left it. <laughs> no, I, I mean, you know, you're. Yeah, no, I remember meeting girls. Be back, I remember man. you. You meet a girl, and they would tell you they would they would give you the lineup. Like you know, I was with George. You know, I was with Paul. And you know, I was with Carlos. You know, I, I would hear that, and I'd be like, "What the fuck, right? Like, I'm, not the, I'm the fourth one in. What the fuck, you know?" <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 well, for me, bro, as I got older, as and and, and I, uh, I've learned to enjoy. Uh, things that I didn't enjoy before, you know, and and, and and enjoy the craft a lot more. Everything slows down as you get older. Yeah, it does. And you and just enjoy. It. I mean, I'm not not ready to die or retire or anything, but but it's just a lot more fun now. Like before, there would be a okay. Let's say okay. I'll give you an example. Let's say there's a comedian before, and and I didn't pick the guy. I didn't pick the opener. And I'm like, fuck, I didn't pick this guy, man. Right. That's what the fuck, right? Now it's like. Okay, you got you got an opener. Cool. What's his name? All right, uh, uh, Harry, Harry Harry Derry. Okay, Harry Derry, right? <laughs> Whatever, right? And you're like, and then I watch That's him. That's a fucking good name too, Harry, <laughs> Harry Derry. Derry. Yeah. So Jot that so down. the guy does like hacky jokes, and and I'm just I, now, now I just smile, you know. Now I just smile and go, oh, this guy man, he's got a lot to learn, you know. And then he'll get off, and he's like, hey, did you see me? Go, yeah, man. What'd you think, dude? Man, keep at it, you know. Keep working, <laughs> you know. Whereas before, I'd be like. The fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> you fucking hack! I didn't even fucking pick you, man. I used to be, yeah, you know. Now, true. now that that's out. I remember poor, you know, Darren Carter, right? Yeah. I remember poor Darren Carter with my feature one time, and oh my, God, I was such an asshole to him, man. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing with all these noises and these fucking? You tell some fucking jokes, man. Fuck, you know, I was. I was like, and that was it's a and that became a style like a created yeah. a style of yeah. comedian that does the, the noises, noises and, and, and little dances yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, right? yeah. so but, a, is he the freckled face yes, guy that does yeah. a Mexican? Yeah, he imitates he? A, a gangster. He does. He does. Yeah, yeah. All right, I no, it, this guy's. I'll be right back. No, but, uh, yeah, yeah. No, he's he's you know. I handle things different now, you know. I, I I would embrace that that comedian that, you know what I mean. That would sure. piss, that would other word, uh, you know, other times would p- piss me off. Now I'd be like, you know, good work, man. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you're doing your thing, you know. I followed comedy, you know, for you. Know, first first stand up live comic I saw was uh, Dom Herrera. Dom Herrera. Yeah, and and I saw him and he was hilarious to me. I've always followed com I've always followed com I listen to you all the time. Uh, all these uh, these guys I do uh to be working or hanging around yeah. or whatever you call <laughs> whatever it, it is we're doing. Well, no, it is. You know it's funny but th- there's a there's a big connection with comedians and and cops. And people, uh, people have asked like, well, "How come I, every, any city I go to, bro? I always hang out with the cops. Always they'll call me. Will you in town? Yeah. All right. Boom, boom." And I feel that the connection between comedians and cops is because you guys, your sense of humor is dark as fuck. Oh, and the jokes that very jokes morose that these, sense of humor. The jokes that these guys tell. Yeah. I just I remember a buddy of mine, a homicide detective in LA, they went to go see we went to go party after, right? But they went to go see a crime. And then Harry and, Daryl. And he goes <laughs> he goes, uh he goes, I go, what happened to that guy? And he goes, uh, he goes, he was shy. I go, what do you mean shy? No, he was all red. <laughs> <laughs> he shot himself in the face, the, and the blood was all over. So the cop's joke was, yeah, he was shy. You know, he, 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 he was uh, he was blushing. And yeah. that was, I, I got blushing. And uh, you know, yeah, yeah, he killed himself. But that was a, that was that's cop humor. <laughs> that a term? Yeah, 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 you it, have it, to have it, a sense of humor dark, in order to get through all the shit that we you see and yeah. deal with family. So you have to have a, a morose sense of humor. And, and I and I believe that's the connection between why so many cops uh, 
and comedians, there's a there's a there's the connection, man. Right. You know, I laugh because harder, of, the, you're, the dirtier, the funnier, the far off. Yeah. I laugh harder. It, yeah. It's it's and, fun. And, and, hey, bro. And but, no, but amongst yeah. musicians, there's more camaraderie than there is amongst comedy. You've been around comedians. Yes. Yeah. So he played he played music. Yeah. There right. there, there there was everybody. Everybody gets along. Everybody tries to help everybody out. There's, there's different. No, there's there's there, nothing yeah. wrong with somebody jumping in there and doing a set with you. Right. You know, somebody wants so to come so in. You, and you, join played, in. you played with the Salas brothers. I uh, no? I remember when they were the Salas brothers. I remember when they were the Salas brothers before they became Tierra. Tierra. Yeah. Yeah. They were kid. They were young. Oh really? Yeah. You used to see them play. Salute. salute. I played gigs with them. They you know, you know Rudy, uh, right? You know Rudy. Yeah, and Rudy, Rudy and Stevie. Stevie Rudy and Stevie. 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 The first time I played with them was over at the basement of Salesian, at not a Salesian, but uh, cathedral. Right, no, there's a Catholic church right there in East oh. LA. But uh, Echo uh, Park, by the by the across uh, street from the from the lake. No, no, that's that's the that's a police station across from the lake, right on the Landing Boulevard, right by this public uh, oh, pool. Okay. There's a uh, Catholic school there, and that's first. First place I saw him play. So you, you guys, no, there, there is like George is saying, there is, a, there is more of, a, there is more of a, 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 of a brotherhood. Sure. Because uh, what about uh, the drummer for, uh, for War, Sal? Sal. You know Sal? No, I oh, didn't okay. know Sal. He, uh, yeah, he's good, good, good dude, right? Good dude. He's, but also, but also, you have the brothers in Oasis that don't talk. Yep. Uh, and Van Halen, the singer, and the and Eddie Van Halen, Cabrera the Soul, that, that didn't don't didn't vibe. So you could get some fucking really hard fucking relationships well, in music the, where Rudy and Steve didn't talk for a long time. They're yeah. in not that they the they went to the grave <laughs> not talking. Well, yeah. they were talking just before they went to the grave. They did, yeah, yeah. I know, but they were. There was always battle yeah. with those two. Yeah, and then we, and go, and then I, I would see them, and, and then and they even and, made two fucking tierras. Two tierras, yeah, yeah. yeah tierra one, tierra two. But uh, right. So the, so so, I mean, if you look at their brotherhood like whatever business they had with each other or whatever issues they had with each other the business drove those a wedge to those guys that family couldn't put together yeah that like they was went years right problems. they went years without talking yeah that was family problems though but if tierra was playing and somebody from the midnighters was in the house hey come on up play set with us they get up there and play with them right you know so it, yeah it, you it play with those guys yeah i played with Is, those guys uh, so it didn't matter uh you know, Los Lobos. I saw them at the Greek Theater last year, and I, I want to say they had uh, Los Lonely Boys or one of those. Mm-hmm. And one of the guitar players, they let him jam with Los Lobos. And he was so excited because he was up there playing. They didn't care. You know, he was up there playing. And the Los Lobos, Conrad was laughing at him because he's telling the other guy, hey, look at this. Look at this guy. You know, he's so excited just because he's up here jamming with. But it didn't matter. You can jam with anybody when you're a player. Right. You yeah. So, and, and yeah, George, how come out? You didn't have the, uh, the other cats jam with you, bro. I, I didn't bring anybody <laughs> I didn't bring anybody <laughs> jam with me. But comedians, you do stuff on your own. So yeah. you don't want somebody to get up there. Uh, I, I thought you went like this. Show me up. I thought you went like this. I thought you went like this. Comedians. But where did all, all those fucking Chicago comedians, where did all the Latinos comedians come from? Where do they Where do they come from? Like be, like, in the early '80s, there was Angel Salazar was in New York, Angel. and then uh, there was a guy named Hank Garcia who did the Tonight Show in the '70s. That's when Fluffy really? came out in the '80s. No, was he around the '80s? Yeah, no. been a long time. I, I, what, Fluffy, you know, know, no, you know Fluffy, him. Fluffy didn't come out till 80, like, early no, '90s. Early. I, I used to hire him. I hired him right there at Steven Steakhouse. Yeah, but but that was the no no because I I had started in '91. And he, had, he, he hadn't started yet. He hadn't oh, started comedy yet. He would have been 14 in 1990, so probably early yeah. 90s How old at is some he? point. If he, now he's 46. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's younger than I thought. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. How young. I remember hiring uh, him then, uh, Alonzo Bowden. That's Alonzo we're, Bowden. We're but what were you, the him. fucking booker at Steve? <laughs> have you, you ever worked no, at Steve? That's why I did all my fundraisers for these guys. Gilbert Esquivel. Gilbert Esquivel. That's he, he was part of the crew. I, uh, Jim, Jim, you know Jim, right? Jimmy Philippine, right? Jim, right. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a yeah. great guy. Yeah. Good friend of mine. He has some really good, I, I'm not going to say him, but man, he's got some good mob stories. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. You know what I mean? I really... He wanted me to do one of his, he wanted me to do one of the interviews with uh, Mobster, but the guy that you're talking about didn't want a cop doing it. You know who? Yeah, okay. Yeah. When, I, oh, when, wow. he, when he told me this guy knocked that, you know the story, yeah. when went looking for him, 
and they said, uh, such and such is here to see you. Heavy hitter, bro. I'll tell you off the air. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, 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 I don't want to drop any names. No, no, no. Yeah. But, but, but somebody, if you said his name, everybody yeah, would affiliation know. Affiliation oh, yeah. is not important. Yeah, <laughs> really? yeah it would be. Yeah. Everybody but, uh, know him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's got some really good stories, man. Oh, yeah. Good good guy. No, but tell the story. What happened? Don't yeah. say his name, but they're not going well, to do it. And then said, hey, I, just, I, I, I came here looking for you to tell you that I knew your dad real well. And your dad was had a lot of respect, well-known. And I just want to tell you, man, the message is that your dad was a well-liked guy. And I just felt like I had to tell you that. That's what he told me. Did you hear that story? Yeah, he, that. Yeah. And he was going to do a yeah, uh, yeah. one-on-one yeah. show, one-man show with this guy. Yeah. And he wanted me to be the moderator. He wanted me to do the interview. And the guy said, we got to find somebody else because I just can't work with cops. You know, he didn't want really? me. Yeah. He That's did, real. He didn't yeah, want yeah. me. That's real. You know, and just still didn't have the the faith. And that, and that was all good. Uh, but he it was a heavy hitter. And Jim and I are so, so great friends. I was at uh, Whisper Rock in Arizona playing golf uh, with these guys. Uh, and uh, this little guy came in, Italian dude, little stocky dude. <laughs> he's got the chain. He's got a big watch. And they go, hey, there's Scotty over there. Scotty! Fucking Scotty. Because, hey, you guys, what's going on? Hey. He goes, what? let me see your watch over Oh, let me see that. Jordan. Oh, God. I thought that was a Fergazi. From over there, it looked like it was a Fergazi. I said, oh, yeah? All right. I'll, hey, you take it easy. Hey, Jordan, that's to be God bless. I'm like, who's that? Oh, it's Scotty. That motherfucker was a fucking mobster for the Whitless <laughs> oh, fucking oh, relocation oh. program. <laughs> He changed his name. His name was Scotty. That dude's like, thinking about that one. Hey, you just got, got blessed. Like, what, what Scotty fuck? McCormick. Right? right? Yeah. Total fucking uh, uh, witness reloc- relocation. So, so, did you guys know? You guys know each other? Did we no, no, Steven no. no, man. I, well, I no. saw I did the fundraisers. For, I, I, for 15 years, I did fundraisers there, bro. I, that's what I'll, that's all I did. I was working homicide at the time. I used to put on fundraisers for... Homicide Bureau and for the National Latino Peace Officer Association. Okay. So we, 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 I'm sure we crossed. We've them. crossed, bro. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Jim's very, uh, he always helped me out with uh, with the fundraisers for the for the kids. Sure. He would give me that homie discount, you know, like uh, like yeah, because because yeah. I would have dinner for the the par- the parents, and then we would have a comedy show. Yeah. And obviously, all the money went to these guys to to the teams. Pretty good. One of the coolest things that. Remember uh, when the whole two teams, there was like 30 kids. All you guys walked into Dick's. <laughs> Remember that? Dick's Sporting Goods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you guys do, bro? You just went crazy. They they could, you get whatever you want? Yeah. Every, everybody. Yeah. Every little kid, bro. Spray. There were kids picking up like two baseball gloves. Can I get two, coach? Yeah. I said, yeah, go wow, two. Man. Two. Holy shit. Right? The, 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 that's, that's $500, crazy. bro. That's 500 bucks, two gloves. Yeah, and then crazy. another kid would grab a fucking pants. And, he, and, and I remember he would have catcher's gear. Catcher's gear, coach. Oh, I said, get it, kid. I felt like, honestly, you know. That's a that's good slogan a, for Dick. What, what a great feeling. What a great feeling. Yeah, it is a great feeling, sure. bro. And it, oh, yeah. and it wasn't, I don't, you know, it wasn't just because of me. It was all the people who, when I would put a flyer out, you know, oh, that Stevens, and they would come. And I would always put, "Hey, man, this money is going to a good cause," you know. And uh, and it does. You feel like Santa Claus, bro. You know. And here's another thing. I'll tell you what. I felt really good when, like, three or four of your friends in, in high school, where, where they wrote the story, you know. Oh yeah. Come, come here, come here, bro. Tell the story real quick. This is this is the one that makes me feel good. Like the payoff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so, what what did uh. What did they? What did, what did your like three or f- four friends do? No, yeah. So like you know when you go to college, you have to take the SATs and like write, yep. write a essay, mm-hmm. and the topic was like uh, write someone who really impacted your life, and then like uh, two of my friends came up to me and without even like you know just writing like separately throughout the day like hey bro I just want to tell you that I wrote about your dad, and that, yeah, that yeah, really changed that's the, great. Oh, that's and then yeah, like um I'd say maybe six or seven of my friends who played who I played literally with. Ended up playing uh, college baseball too. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, no, it, no, no. It's all, it's all it was an yeah. effort, community effort, man. It was, it was. I can't, I can't say that because it was the other coaches sure. that helped. It was the parents that would help me put together. Bro, I did this thing. I, I, I created this thing in the summertime, and we did it at LAPD at the at the uh, academy because one of the kids was uh, his dad was a cop. And we, he let us use the front yard. You know, the lawn in the front, mm-hmm. right there. When once you go in, there's the lawn right there. And bro, we do you know that we snuck in beers and we we would sell them. We would sell the beers like it, there was eight dollars a beer. Yeah. And uh, and then 
why one mom was was in charge of bringing a big pot of rice, another mom uh, the beans, another mom the tortillas, and the plates cost. To make it, it was. I'm, I'm, it was if you put it on, you know, on paper, it's probably 50, 60 bucks, right? 70 bucks. But everyone that came and wanted to play had to pay 50 bucks, bro, for that for that meal. Right. Little, little carne asada meal, bro. Yeah. And, and we turned that money around and, and there you, you know, go. No. But that goes to the personality, right? Of wanting to be an includer and wanting to make people better yeah. around him, the kids around him. And, and Jimmy doesn't like. The notoriety. He doesn't want people no, to know. No, no, he doesn't. We we did the same thing uh, about high school rings for the, the kids. Fucking stuff, fucking fucking oh. warrants. That's probably why. <laughs> or uh, it, for the Garfield High School. Don't, don't bring me up. He says, don't bring me up. Yeah, they want to do a press conference. And he says, absolutely not. You know, we don't want to because they won the championship. We got them rings. Uh, we got with that. Each ring was five hundred dollars a pop. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I forget how many rings they wanted to buy. I said, "Ching, God, we're not buying for the whole school." Right, right. But you know, the staff, the clerk, the that, that, that. And he got it all, and that's... He's weird. a real community guy. Bro. Yeah. He, he, even though... And I didn't know until I heard, started hearing those mob stories of, like, one of the oldest Italian families in, uh, in like, East L.A. area is his dad when they came from... They from Sicily. From, yeah, you it's know. changed a lot. Yeah, that was a different uh, area back in, when it's in the 50s, the yeah. 40s, I used, to, 50s. I used to drink uh, with his dad. Used to oh, really? Drink, yeah. And, that's, and, and Jim's the same way as his dad, but funny, sharp... Sharp tongue. Yeah, yeah, quick, man. Okay, give us the update on the VFW. VFW, we're still waiting for them to reopen again. It's still administrative work. They're catching up on them. We just had a meeting the other day. And so I'm Tell hoping, Willie what happened. They, 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 tell. Administratively, you know, VFW post-1944 was over in Hacienda Heights. And they were closed down. There was administrative paperwork that had to be done, and everything has to be done. It's a 501c3 thing. So administrative, there is no uh, investigation. There's no malfeasance. Nobody's stealing anything. It's one of them. They make money at that post. Right. But administratively, their paperwork was gone. One of the things that was gone, uh, their taxes weren't paid. Well, the taxes were paid, and they were paid on time. But they didn't get posted because... They're listed as the Veterans uh, veterans of Foreign Wars post-1944 La Puente. Well, they wrote VFW instead of Veterans of Foreign Wars. That's enough to kick it back until they get everything legitimized. And, in fact, they they realized that, yeah, they had been paid. Matter of fact, they owed us money oh, wow. back. So it's administrative work. They're trying to catch up on everything, reporting properly. You know, where did you spend your money? Where is this gone? Where is it? And so we're hoping, beyond hope, that by the end of this month we're back in business again. And and I go down there. God bless. <laughs> once a week. Nice. Once a week, every Tuesday. But you haven't been yeah. in there lately, no, right? No, no, it's close. Pet doors close. locked, like a and chain on them, like insulting. There, there's three guys that we meet, and so now we're going over to uh, we go to someplace else. Find once a week, find a place to have a cocktail. Matter right. of fact, this uh, at Rudy's right there behind Pep Boys in East L.A. Yeah, I know exactly uh, that. <laughs> so we're going to go down there and have lunch uh, with some guys on uh, Tuesday. I don't know, man. It's it's and, and what what are they doing there? Do they do any shows in there, any music? At the, at the VFW? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They they have uh, shows. Uh, the Legends, uh, La- Legends of East L.A., uh, put on concerts there. They put Midnighters. comedy shows on. Who's the Legends of East L.A.? Oh, guys like, well, Tierra used to play, uh, Rocky Padilla used to play, Padilla. Blue Satins would get together up there and play. Uh, the big guy is Frankie, and I can't remember Frankie's last name. I'm sorry, Frankie. What about Rosie and the Originals? Uh, is she from East she's, LA? She's, no, but she's been, she's it, played at, at, at is, Stevens. Is she Chicana, bro? Is she? No. No? No. Oh, I always thought she was. She, I, don't not think, I, I, won't say, I won't say no. I, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I always thought she but, was because she was but, from, uh, they, from they, the East Side, right? Yeah. They put on uh, big shows, shows that, unlike when you perform there, they put on shows there. They 4,000 people. They close off the front street, use the front street, yeah. put on a big stage. It's a big thing there now. No, no, they do. They, have, they, they don't do they that have, anymore? They no, do they that. Some no, of them, I think they had Snoop Dogg. They what they're doing. Didn't they have Snoop Dogg? This, yeah, like, this Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Uh, uh, who's there Saturday? Uh, I don't know. Some uh, Latino group. I don't know if it's this Saturday, because I don't follow them that much. You know, hey, I, I, I go down there to eat and do whatever... If it's somebody that I like, he'll tell me, hey, I got this group coming in. So we go down and... Uh, I'm trying to go out there. So he, has, I, he has Vicky Carr often, Vicky right? Carr, I've seen... I've yeah. been down there. Vicky Carr was good friends with his mom and dad. 
for the 25th wedding anniversary. Vicky Carr was at at their house. I was out there with them. Does and it? Steven Stegel have it on the website? No, yeah, they, they they put it on their website. Everybody's going to... Watch out. <laughs> all I've seen lately are, are Latino groups coming up. Well, what else would you put out there? So <laughs> if your place ever opens, we'll go in there and yeah. do a show. You, 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 he, he, he's told me. He's at it. Right. When I told me and him, Willie, we'll get somebody else, but yeah. not Rudy Moreno. <laughs> no, doesn't have to be Rudy Moreno. We'll keep, we'll keep. Huh? What about Rudy Moreno? <laughs> I got nothing to say, bro. How about those? He's starting I, I, to, you know what? He's so desperate <laughs> to sell tickets. He's putting fucking there's noodles out there, chicks that are naked, throw wendas, and he says, and you're like, whoa, what's this? What the fuck? Rudy's going to be somewhere Tuesday night. What the fuck? Hey, it's false advertising. He got, he, yeah. he puts fucking a chick with a bikini. Hey, bro. And you, you know, the camel toe. And you're like, what the fuck? Rudy Moreno. Yeah, he, he's a, uh, man. You, you know him, bro. He's I know a, him he's a character. You, I he's think you've known him longer than yeah, I have. He's a character, bro. He's a. What about we, when he we, fell in the fire, man? I don't know. He, he fell hand. He got he got drunk and he fell into a little barbecue Ooh. pit, Holy hands shit. first. So he burned it. He burned oh, his hands oh, like the skin of his hands. So he had to wear these uh, mittens. Oh, so I started calling yeah. them socks, say eh, because you know, fucking like little white hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like a, like a cat with little mittens on. <laughs> Uh, only, only that Chicago make fun of about that fucking fell in the fire. <laughs> I have no problem with it. No, my favorite, but, but, my what, favorite what, story is of Rudy, bro. Like, every, everybody's got Rudy stories, uh, right? My favorite story is like, he used to get paid X amount of money for this <laughs> to book this casino. Uh, was, uh, near Commerce Steven's Casino. Commerce. Yeah. And then uh, he'd handle he'd handle <laughs> the comedians just 20 bucks. He'd, 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 like, you know, give some... You know that story. You know I know you know. What would he do? He would keep all the money. Yeah, bro. And then he comes toy drives. Where they And then he comes driving with a brand new Jaguar. Like what the fuck? Oh yeah, he did. Like a brand new Jaguar, bro. (laughs) Yeah, he's a character, bro. He's still out there. I think he's still out there trying to. Uh, Yeah, bro. I think I I don't. I don't really talk to him too much, bro. No, you know. Mm, He's still doing stand up. He's still doing. I get his ad very I get his stuff, so he's out. Do you see how he's now. using girls now, like inappropriate pictures to try to sell comedy tickets? No, no I, 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 I don't pay attention. I don't well, pay attention. I, but I, I like his ads. His ads are, 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 are <laughs> I'll entertaining, right. bro, because he'll say, he'll say things like, uh, he'll say, hey, everybody, come support me at my club. All these years that I've done comedy for you guys, you guys don't come support me? All right, whatever. <laughs> right? Oh, those, those are his commercials? No, those are his, those are, those, that's him inviting people to his uh, comedy shows. That's you know what? After all the years and all the shows I've done, and you can't come see my show, okay, we know, we know, I know where my friends are, and that'd be the end of the, the video. <laughs> and then they'd say, come see me at, you know, something. At Go Bananas. Yeah, Go Bananas. <laughs> right? Well, and I hate to be time cop guys, but that's uh, two hours fifteen for us. What we gotta, the fuck? Yeah, that, two, that two flew hours. by. We're, we're losing the studio here in Whoa. a second. Well, he has a GoFundMe eh, for what? <laughs> for his Jaguar. He did a tune-up. Hey, Willie, man, thanks for coming in, dude. Thank you for having me, bro. It was yeah. awesome, man. Thanks yeah. for coming. I learned a lot you. about you I didn't know, and uh, I don't, I can't remember that we talked that much, but fuck, I'm glad we talked today. No, right on, bro. And and, I, good, and man. I'm glad you solidified what I, what you, you know, you coming and and sharing about your situation of why you were kind of a little disconnected yeah. from everybody. So, I, you know, I get it. I get it, bro. Yeah. So, I, thank you for having me, bro. You thank you for it. having me, guys. Well, Absolutely. Dude. Thanks All for right, coming bro. out. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. Thanks thank for you. Out, bro.